and that was indicative of the season as a whole. And you just have to go back to the drawing board and try all sorts of new things because that just didn't work. The other way to look at it is it was a playoff atmosphere. The team didn't tra travel very well. They were in the game through three quarters. They're probably the more talented team. And uh, Springfield was better last Friday night, especially closing the game out. But you take solace knowing that there were a lot of good things, even in what was really a bad night, but sometimes 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds have a bad night. Yeah, you know, we, we've we had that really good defensive backfield uh, all year long, and it, you know, one game it doesn't show up, or they have some miscommunications, whatever it happens there, you know. So, yeah, you're right, Eric. This is not a time to go ahead and press the panic button, but this is also a time of the year that you want to be playing, you know, the mistake-free football. You want to be playing that type of football that, uh, it, you know, teams will remember that, uh, hey, we just came off the same football uh, field with that Hermerson team. They are very, very good. So that's the, uh, that's the question, is how does Hermiston respond? Because what was interesting, and we talked about it last week, that Springfield was coming off of the loss that they took down at Ashland. And second-year head man Dave Heiberger said, you know, we knew we had to reevaluate on that bus drive back because we weren't ready to play. We took that long trip down. We didn't come out ready to play. We were in it the whole time, but just didn't play with a lot of fire. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and what did they do? The next week they came back and Springfield played arguably their best game of the season, put up 49 points against Hermiston and come away with the 49 to 28 victory. So the blueprint is there. Hermiston had it happen to them last week. Now they need to do it to Southridge here tonight. This is your Sway Motors pregame show. We'll take a break as we continue our coverage on a cool evening in Hermiston on 1360 KOHU. It's the battle of the bumper sale at Harley Swain Subaru and Swain Motors in Hermiston. When they compete, you win with interest rates as low as 2.49% for up to 72 months OAC. No payments for 90 days and top dollar paid for your trade-in. Receive a free HDTV with qualifying purchases. Sale ends Monday, so hurry in now. It's the battle of the bumper sale. It's all at Harley Swain Subaru, Swain Motors, Highway 395, Hermiston. When you hear the name Earnhardt, you might not immediately think of farming. But my family's been at it for years, just like Nationwide Agribusiness. And with their On Your Side Farm Review, you get a personalized policy for your farm with the coverage you need at the right price for you. ISU, the Stratton Agency, your one responsible source. Highway 395, Hermiston, in Pendleton, and online at stratton-insurance.com. Products underwritten by Nationwide Agribusiness Insurance Company and affiliate companies. Number nine, subject to underwriting guidelines for dealers. Global products and discounts not available to all persons in all states. Paid endorsement. KOHU, Hermiston. We continue pregame coverage tonight on the Sway Motors pregame show from Hermiston High School's Kennison Field to Bulldogs Stadium. The uh, Bulldogs welcoming in the uh, visiting Southridge as Suns. Head coach Tony Rebolt's team is uh, coming in with a 3-2 and two record. They got the big win last week over Pasco. Really dominated the thing from start to finish. But this Southridge team has a very similar makeup to that of the team they had a year ago. It's turn, hand the ball to Caden Diaz, and block for him, or turn, and hand the ball to Maceo Ile Thomas, and block for him, and the other team's goal, well, make some tackles if you can. That's a, a different type of team than one we've seen in a while, where they are a traditional running team, so not Sherwood, but everybody else has been a passing team this year, primary. Well, that's going to be the key, you know, again, from what I understand, from what I, uh, I like I said, I did not get to see that game last year, so I don't know if uh, they have, other than the quarterback, if they have an inside-outside type running team or, you know, where they're going. I, I understand that Diaz likes to go off tackle. And, a lot of uh, stretch stuff. Yeah, okay, so if it's that way, then, you know, this is going to have to be exactly what we talked about on uh, earlier in the tailgate show, uh, a very, very disciplined football team 
to contain him inside the tackle boxes. They got some big guys on the offensive line. They're going to be bigger in the trenches than Hermiston. Have you heard that before? Um, and, you know, it is a question of how well you shut down their running game and force them to pass. A year ago, they were able to force Connor Grigg and Grant Latham to pass, the two senior quarterbacks for the Suns. And this year, it's Jair Lee Thomas, who is a junior, so first-year varsity guy, and you're looking at... A, a new look. Uh, I'll tell you this. The guy is fearless. I watched him in the Kennewick game, the Kamiakin game, and the Pasco game. He will sit in the pocket. He will wait and wait and wait, and then he'll deliver a pass, and he doesn't really care if he's going to get hit. So he is fearless in there. Sometimes to a fault, he seems to wait too long to deliver the ball sometimes, which is the same thing that Chase Canutes went through and occasionally goes through this year, is holding on to the ball a little bit too long. Well, you know, and that's just going to be a, a credit to the Hermiston uh, defense in their, in their interior front, whether or not they can make him pay for when he makes that decision to go ahead and hold on to it too long. Um, you, if, you can get the, uh, if you can get the early... Uh, pressuring up the middle, then you know what? Hey, that makes him have to get on his horse, maybe get out of the pocket where he doesn't want to be, where he's not comfortable taking, uh, you know, a whole lot of time. But then you still have to worry about containing it against the run. J.L.A. Thomas, Caden Diaz, along with a starting defensive end, for the Southridge Suns, Kellen Eichel. And last but not least, the big boy who plays in the middle of their defense, Trey Tutt, the captains for Southridge, meet it at midfield with Tony Green and Jacob Harmon. And the captains for Hermiston, captains. That means leadership, and that's what you heard Mark Hodges very candidly a few minutes ago, very candidly a week ago as well, when you're talking about what this team was lacking. And for him and for the coaches, they're right now searching for leaders. You know, and you've got to have one. You know, even if it's not the, you know, the, the go play it out hard uh, leader out there that is just the emotional leader, you know, that's one thing that this team has not lacked. They've, it's, it's been a little bit later in the year or earlier in the year with other teams that have, they've finally found that emotional type leader that's out there. But Hermiston has been able to go ahead and, uh, you know, find that leadership and put it on the field all at one time. Southridge wins the toss. They defer to the second half. So Hermiston will start on offense here tonight. The Bulldogs, all black uniforms, gold numerals, and trim with their gold helmets with the purple H on each side. Southridge, all white uniforms, blue numerals, and a lettering trimmed in yellow with the blue helmets with the Southridge Good S in yellow on the sides of their helmet. It is just about time for the anthem. It is just about time for kickoff. We're just about ready to wrap up the Sway Motors pregame show. Hermes and, and Southridge coming up tonight from Kennison Field at Bulldog Stadium. After this final break on the Sway Motors pregame show on 1360 KOHU. Mr. Paul Dunsmore.
Bulldogs, number seven, Costa Rodriguez, and number eight, Ramon Contreras, set the kick for the Suns, number one, Nate Newberry. Kickoffs where they kicked it to Damien, and he had a couple of big returns. And I know he joked with Mark Hodges this week, Coach. I think I'm the leading return man for the team this season. <laughs> and he said, Damien, if it makes you feel better, yes, you are the leading return man, whether it's not right or not. <laughs> Nate Newbury is a junior left footed kicker. He has it teed right in the middle of the field at the 40 and will boot it away. This is going to be towards the middle and Costa Rodriguez takes it at the 10. Working to the right side at the hash marks 20. 25 and he skips a man 30. 35 tripped up. The tackle on the play was made by Gavin Jervis, a junior for Southridge, and the Suns will start defensively with Hermiston with the ball on the 38-yard line, first down and 10. The offense was fine last week. 28 points is a little bit below the season average, but they moved the ball, and Mark Hodges said Chase Kadutz might have had his best game of the season, if not his career. In the pistol right now, he will take the snap with Trenton Anto behind him, turn and hand it, Trenton running to the right side, huge hole, he's got across the 40, 45, dives forward, across Tanner Pope who makes the tackle. It's going to be a gain, though, of eight, and Trenton Anto rumbling through a huge hole on the right side. Tony Green, the senior H back, excuse me, junior H back, shifted from the left of Knutes out to the right, and he helped hit that big hole. Now Green again shifts that way. It's going to be up the middle and a huge hole for Anto. He's got a blocker in front across the 40 into Southridge territory. 35 and down the right hash mark to the 33-yard line. Giant run for Trent Nanto and a couple of big ones early on, but now a little bit of a nervous moment for Hermiston. Anto a little bit hobbled as he comes off. Costa Rodriguez will come on. Two running backs missing this week. First down and 10 from the 34-yard line. Right hash mark set. Green will shift out to the right side. Caduce flips it out to the left side. Caught. Contreras comes back to his right at the hash mark. Spins off the tackle. He's at the 20. 15. 10. 5. Kicks into the end zone. and stays up on his feet for the score. From 34 yards out, Hermiston's on the board. Nice job that time, you know, going from the power game with Anto and making sure everything goes, sets up that little uh, a quick out for Ramon to go all 34 yards. It was just a quick little flip out into the left flat and Contreras easily home. Well, not easily. Kyler McCammy to hold, Cesar Flores to snap. Luis Medina, the kick, good snap, good hold. The kick is up, it is through. Medina has been tremendous. And extra points this season. Not a ton of misses. He's got one to his name. And a lot of the other mistakes are on the snapper and the holder. 7-0 Hermiston. And if the Bulldogs needed a quick start, and we said they did, that's it right there. Yeah, it is. And, you know, excellent job. Like I said, you know, when you get Anto going ahead and, and powering the ball like he did, two great holes made out there by his offensive line that seems to be coming out here with a little bit of fire in him right now. You know, that is the opening uh, drive statement he really wanted to have. And Anto, again, came off just a little bit hobbled. He's obviously not 100% yet. But you've got Costa Rodriguez who can come in there. What you don't have, and I had alluded to it, two running backs out. Corey Adams is out again this week with concussion symptoms from two weeks ago. Hector Rangel this week after his best game of his entire career last week at Springfield. Tuesday this week in practice breaks his ankle and he's done. And that's really tough because Hector's really struggled to stay healthy and that's you know there's nothing you can do about that Luis Medina has it teed kicks it away boots it well end over end spinner to the left hash mark taken at the eight yard line moving to the right side Clay Gonzalez has it at the right hash 20 25 breaks the tackle and is brought down from behind after return of about 20 up to the 20 six yard line 27 is where they will start the Southridge Sun so a new quarterback Jair Eli Thomas stands at 6'1 170 and he is a junior trips to the left a man alone to the right Caden Diaz in the backfield Eli Thomas long count takes a snap quick throw out to the left flat 
And coming out to the near sideline is going to be Masili Le Thomas, who drives forward up to the 40-yard line where Costa Rodriguez makes the tackle. Just a swing out to the flat. And I was wondering... My seal, Eli Thomas, is a junior. He had not been starting in the three games I got to see, Kennewick, Kamaikin, and Pasco, but he is just so tremendous. And a year ago, he was the one who gave Hermiston fits after Caden Diaz got hurt. First down and 10 from the 40. Left hash mark set. Straight drop. Look at the throw. Quickly over the middle. Hit there. Eli Thomas has it from his brother up to the 46-yard uh, line. Give him a six-yard gain. And a second down and four coming up. So Caden Diaz is the senior deep man. He's 5'9", 195 pounds. We haven't seen him tote the ball yet, but he has this season 93 times for 536 yards and nine trips to the end zone. Second and four. Jair Eli Thomas to throw again. He pumps, pulls it down. He's going to run slides to the 48-yard line. Two-yard gain. Third and two on the way for the Suns. Some changes coming for Hermiston on the interior line. Damian Martinez, Trenton Anto, who is playing defensively, off. Landon Gamel comes on along with Trey Wilson. Anto, Dylan Caldwell, Damian Martinez, Trey Caldwell started on the line. But it's going to be a rotating cast of characters. Third and two. Eli Thomas takes a snap, turns, hands straight up the middle. Diaz, he's hit. He bounces off of one tackler and is stopped at the 49-yard line. One yard needed, two, and it was Wilson and Caldwell in on the stop to force the fourth down and short situation just short of midfield. The personnel is changing for Southridge. Looks like the punt crew coming out. 9.20 on the clock in the first quarter. Hermiston scores on their opening drive and lead the Southridge Suns visiting at Kennison Field tonight, 7-0. Bunter's going to be a Hunter Spiva. He's a freshman, right-footed kicker. Snap is high. He steps to his right, gets it away under a little bit of pressure from Hayden Simon. And Contreras takes it, drops it. It is loose. Rolling around at the 18-yard line, and Romo comes out of the pile with it. So a fumble, but it's recovered immediately for Hermiston. And the Bulldogs, with the 7-0 lead, will take over. Good defensive stand after a couple of quick strike plays in the passing game. They were able to buckle down. You know, and that's what they have to do now. Let's see if they can follow it up with a, with a nice little drive or, you know, see if Chase will go for a follow and one right now. Canute's pistol set. Anto stands behind him. First down and 10. Play action. Rolling to the left in the middle of the field. Flings to the far sideline. Tipped and incomplete. Knocked out of the hands of Ramon Contreras. Coverage on the play was uh, Pope. The junior knocked it out. Pope starts at one safety position. Jake Bauman at the other. Brandon Zane and Clay Gonzalez, the cornerbacks. Kellen Itala, Trey Tut, Corey Rommeling, and uh, Cody Studefant. Across the defensive line, Caden Diaz and Bryce Overholt, the outside linebackers, Gavin Jervis in the middle. Second and ten, play action again. Flip it out into the left flat, caught there by Anto. He'll dive forward across the 20, two-yard gain on the quick screen play to the back. Check that, it was green, not Anto. They're down, seven to go. Knutz takes a snap. He'll fake a handoff, looking over the middle. Tons of time, throws it deep. Ethan Stokes, keep up, everybody has it at midfield. Right in the middle of the park, he's caught by four Southridge Suns, but not before Snow was able to make the catch, and it was Knutz to make a perfect throw. Yeah, he had a nice little touch right over the top of him for that nice little 30-yard toss over the middle, Eric. You know, and you've got to be able to go ahead and that kind of have that type of a of a touch on the Ethan ball. Snow's 20th catch of the season, 276 yards. He's got two trips to the end zone. First down and 10. Turn handoff to Anto. Straight up the middle. Edge is out to his right. At the right hash, he's at the 40. 45, now 30. 35, now 30. But it's a big run for Anto, whether I can count or not. And about nearly 20 yards for another first down for Hermiston. 18 yards that time, Eric. Well, wait a minute now. Bulldogs, the 
First down and 10. Tony Green will shift out to the left at the H-back position. Costa Rodriguez straight up the gut, edges to his right, breaks through a tackler all the way down to the 20-yard line. He just keeps fighting through arm tackles, and the Southridge Suns are not tackling well right now for their fourth-year head coach, Tony Rebolt, who's in his 15th season with Southridge. Yeah, that was an eight, uh, 21 yard uh, run by Anto, and that time Costa just uh, ripped off another seven. Costa's still the deep man. Now he'll step up next to Knutes, green to his left. Costa shifts out to the backfield right with trips out that way. Up the middle to green. He'll fight forward near the 15-yard line. A four-yard gain, enough for a first down. Move the chains for a sixth time tonight. 7.20 on the clock in the first quarter. Hermiston has it in the red zone. Up 7-0 against the visiting Southridge Suns who have not started the way they would want to. Knutes with Green to his left, two wide to the right side, play action. Rolling to the left to the corner of the end zone for Contreras. Going up and taking it away is an interception picked off by Gonzalez on an underthrown pass. Clay Gonzalez, the senior DB, read it. And Ramon Contreras, a couple of yards behind it, just realized he didn't have a chance on that one. Nice catch by Gonzalez going up and taking it away. Now that time there, Eric, you said it was underthrown, but it was thrown real late. That pattern there was one that he should have had in the air much before than the defender could have ever turned around and taken a look at it. Put it on the 20-yard line after the touchback. First down and 10 in the middle of the field. And a handoff. The fullback running to the right side, Cody Studevant. Maybe a yard or two up to the 21-22 yard line. Actually, it was uh, Macy Alile Thomas who was running at the fullback position. So he's fullback. Diaz is the tailback. An eye formation behind Jair Ile Thomas. Second and eight. Play action. Thomas under pressure. Dumps it down to yeah, nobody. You have a and right there. it is going to be incomplete. You got to have a grounding. There is no receiver there, number Nick two. Caden the Diaz was Boston. the running back. It kind of slipped around. They were trying to set up a screen, and they struggled even against Pasco, a team they pounded, throwing running back screens. Their wide receiver bubble screens are okay, and the tunnel screens. Their running back stuff is just not clicking. 6:38 on the clock in the first quarter. Seven nothing. Third down and eight for Southridge. In the pistol. Eli Thomas rolling to the left. Some pressure there. Sets and throws way too high. Brandon Zane was on the near sideline, but it was about three more feet over his head. Fourth down and eight, and punt crew back out for the Southridge Suns. Well, if pressure on the quarterback was what the doctor ordered after last week's game, first two Southridge drives, that's definitely there. Yeah, we're getting great pressure off the sides, and uh, you know we're still allowing him to get outside of our uh, of our end out there, Eric. And that's not going to be good for later on if they keep running like that. Spivet is ten to punt it away. Some pressure, but he gets it high into the air. It's short around the midfield stripe is where it'll bounce. Takes the Southridge bounce at the 45. Rolls out of bounds on the Hermiston sideline. Bulldogs moving left to right tonight at uh, Kennison Field, the Bulldogs Stadium. With a uh, bit of cloud cover, 55 degrees. The lights have taken fold with the sun down this evening. <laughs> Not a ton of wind to speak of. Five to ten miles out of the southwest, so it's at Hermiston's back as they attack the east end zone. With six minutes and 22 seconds left in the first quarter, leading 7-0. Chase Knutes, the uh, junior quarterback, first down and 10, turns, play action to throw over the middle. He's got space, he's got time, hits it, and it's Carson Mortar at the uh, first down stripe nearly. Preston's little brother, nine yard gain. They're gonna mark it with the nose of the ball on the 45 yard line in Southridge territory. About a nine and a half yard gain for Mortar, his first catch offensively this season. Second down and inches. Anto shifts out of the backfield to the right. And they'll flip it to him on the near sideline. Hesitates, stutter steps, he'll be dropped for a loss of two. As the uh, Southridge Sun sniffed it out and Cody Studefont was able to get there to make the tackle. And the stoppage. Third down and three. I'll call it two. Right ash mark set. 
Mortar and Contreras to the left. It is uh, Costa Rodriguez, the deep man. He's hitting the backfield. Good penetration by Southridge. And the Suns, big man in the middle, was able to pound through Kellen Itala. And then helped out on the finish, Ripken Dunn, to make a stop for a loss of one. And now Southridge wants a timeout. Tony Rebolt has seen this nightmare for the other team when Ramon Contreras drops back to punt two weeks in a row. They didn't have their alignment correct on the right side, which is where when Contreras is rugby punting, he likes to go to fake. Yeah, you know, and that's another, you know, another thing. If they don't have it there and he likes to make that fake, I'll tell you what, if you've only got one safety valve on this right side, that really hurts you because he can take off and run and really burn you. So they'll reset with the ball at the Southridge 48-yard line on this fourth down and four play. Ramon Contreras with a nice punt could pin Southridge quite deep. To receive for them, Brandon Zane, the junior. Contreras at his own 39-yard line. Good snap. He'll roll to his right, put it away. High kick. Fair catch called for. Driving Zane back to the 13-yard line. Flip the field on the exchange of possession. And Southridge has got a lot of turf in front of them. Field turf, mind you. Here at Kennison Field at Bulldog Stadium in its first season. 87 yards to get into the end zone. Down 7-0. Bulldogs with the touchdown lead. 4.53 on the clock in the first quarter. Eli Thomas under center. He has behind him. Hand it to him. He'll edge back through the middle of the field and is tripped up and stopped up to the 15-yard line. A two-yard gain with Jesse Rodello and Aiden Simons stepping up to help Anto on the stop. You're seeing just all sorts of new faces in new places on the defensive side. The only constants truly, Jacob Harmon at middle linebacker, Jesse Rodello at outside linebacker, Costa Rodriguez at cornerback, and Ramon Contreras at free safety. Into the uh, flat near sideline and uh, pushed out of bounds, Jake Bauman has it across the uh, 20, near the 25 yard line. It's going to be enough for a first down, the third of the game for Southridge. Moves the chains with 4.14 left in the first quarter, and the Bulldogs leading 7-0. Left hash mark set, two wide, now make it three wide receivers to the right of Eli Thomas. The quarterback drops, flips low, and it's going to be incomplete. Intended for Masil Eli Thomas. Instead, an incompletion brings up second down and 10. Left hash mark set at the 25 yard line. The quarterback will drop into the pistol with Diaz behind him. The snap to Eli Thomas turns, hands Diaz running right side. He's got a hole. He's at the 30. Now the 35-yard line where he puts his shoulder down, meets the linebackers for Hermiston. And Contreras stepping up there, helping out Rodello on the tackle. But it's going to be a 10-yard gain and moves the chains. It was a nice, <coughs> nice little trap inside that time, Eric, that we kind of overbid on. But, you know, we're doing a very good job of making sure that we stay with that. Two tight ends, two receivers each way. First down and 10 from the 35-yard line. Long count for the quarterback under center. Turns, hands, Diaz left, flag out. Stops the play. Penalty marker up the Penalty marker came from the umpire, and it's a false start on Southridge. First penalty of the game for either team will move the Suns back five yards to the 30-yard line. Southridge 
with 3.51 left in the first quarter, trailing by a touchdown, 7-0. Has first and 15 from the 30. Right hash mark set. Jair Le Thomas takes a snap. Straight drop, look at a throw, now rolls to his right. Flings a hard pass down the field. It is going to be up and caught, and then breaking away down the far sideline at the 10 into the end zone. Somehow, Clay Gonzalez was able to hold on to that one, fighting for it, keeps it, battling with Ethan Snow, and it's going to be a 70-yard touchdown pass. And there's that long play that bites you again, Eric. It's it's one that we struggle with so far this year. But, you know, you, like you said, there was the kid that went after the football that wanted it more, took it away, and then turned and ran. So it's the junior lefty, Newbury, takes his paces to kick out of the hold of Trenton Nett. Good snap, the hold's there, the kick is up, and it is good. Tie the game, seven apiece, 340 left in the first quarter. And we'll take the break. Back in 60 on 1360 KOHU. Are you ready for number one? Then you're ready for Steel, the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. Steel makes over 30 models of chainsaws designed for homeowners and professionals, and your servicing Steel dealer can match you with the model that's right for your needs. Don't settle for the number of other brands at the big box stores. Get the world's number one selling brand of chainsaw at your local Steel dealer. Are you ready for a Steel? Find the full line of Steel chainsaws at Smitty's Ace Hardware, where they know and service the product they sell. Chevrolet's new tagline is find new roads. Well, Show Chevrolet is doing just that. We are moving, making it easier yet to take a look at what a great product Chevrolet is putting on the road. There are many to choose from, including the new design 2014 Silverado. This fall, Show Chevrolet will be opening our new facility on 395 North in Hermiston. Thanks to our loyal customers, we are able to continue to serve the community and offer a better and easier way to purchase a vehicle. Our new location will be larger and comes with the same friendly and honest service we've had for the last 68 years. Show Chevrolet, 16 years and growing. KOHU, Hermiston. The kick is away for Hermiston in tie ball game. Takes a hop. Contreras takes it at the 8. Now out to the left side. 15-20. 20, 25 into arm tackles and fights for an extra yard or two. Up to the 29-yard line. 19-yard return for Contreras. 3 minutes 32 seconds on the clock of the first period. And the game is tied at 7. After the way that Ethan Snow fought for the ball last week after he had one taken away from him early in the game at Springfield. I'd throw him a ball right here. Yeah. He's going to be wide to the right side. Contreras to the left. Tight ends each way on first down and 10 from the 29. Green flips out to the right side from the H-back. Hand off and Sam Colbray coming to the right. Fights off a tackler. Pushed his shoulder down and is able to get Back to the line of scrimmage, but no gain trying to run stretch to the right side. Kane Kendrick, the uh, quarterbacks coach. Sixth season with the program, second season with the varsity team coaching the quarterbacks. Second down and ten. Hand off, and again, Cole Bray edges to his right, puts his shoulder down, runs over a tackler, but is flipped down by Bauman at the uh, 30 four-yard line, four or five-yard gain, long five yards to go on third down. Green again, motions to the right side, and there's a false start. Hermiston will now have a third down and a long ten to go. Their first penalty of the game. This was the thing that bothered Mark Hodges about last week. And actually, whether it was foreshadowing or not, I asked him in Chalk Talk a week ago before the Springfield game, was he concerned about penalties? Because they'd been up 11 the Dallas game, 10 the game before against Lewiston. And he said, not the aggression penalties, but the pre-snap ones. And then they, they came... Like you, you opened the faucet up last week as far as pre snap. Blitz coming from the edge, and it's going to be deep downfield behind everybody's controls. He's got it in the foot race. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Ramon Contreras got behind the defense and goes for the seven. 
Anthony, one yard score. Knut put it on a dime. Oh, that was the way you got to do it, Eric. He got the ball, a little bit of wind underneath the ball, air into the ball, let Ramon run underneath it, and with Ramon's speed, there's nobody else going to catch. And there's a couple guys that closed in uh, right at the end there, but that was when Ramon had uh, figured he had it all the way to the end zone. 18th touchdown pass on the season for Chase Knutes, who's thrown for about 1,700 yards this year. Luis Medina's kick is up and inside the left goal post to make it 14 to 7 with 227 left in the first quarter. For Ramon, he came into the game with 70 receptions for 668 yards. That's now touchdown 7 and 8 on the season. And already he's up near 800 yards on the year because he's got to be over 100 yards on 100, the night now. 101 on the night uh, with the two receptions already, Eric. It was another good pass. And we go back to it again. The percentage wasn't very good last week for Chase Knutes. But there were quite a few drops. And that was what Mark Hodges said. He said, you know, our quarterback had a great game he really took a step up against Springfield and at times carried the team and kept him in it. And his receivers sometimes weren't there for him. Tonight, he has thrown two really, really nice deep balls. Yeah, and you know, you've got to do that. you got to look at it. Let the, you know, if you can get Ramon out there one-on-one uh, -on -one and just let him get a step on somebody and you put the touch pass out there and get it up over the top, he will run up and get it. There's the Luis Medina leg. It'll drive uh, Masilile Thomas into the end zone for a touchback. You heard Micah Mercer talk about that in the tailgate show. He said, you know, all week long, we hear this from all the coaches, all week long, that's all he does is he pounds touchbacks. And then we get into Friday night and his consistency just hasn't been there. Well, Medina pounded that one into the end zone three yards deep and it puts the ball on the 20 for Southridge. 2.27 left in the first quarter, trailing 14 to 7. Diaz up the middle. No, this is Eli Thomas up the middle. He breaks off a of tacklers and fights forward to the 30 yard line. About a 10 yard run for Masili, Eli Thomas. Caden Diaz got a concussion in the second half last year of the game up at Lampson that Hermiston won 42 to 13. And as a sophomore, Masilo Ile Thomas came in and he just became nearly impossible to tackle one on one. First down and 10 from the 30 yard line. Ile Thomas to Ile Thomas running to the right side, pushes forward at the 35, spins down to the 36 yard line where Michael Finn is in on the stop. Helped out by Ethan Snow. And there is a flag on the play also. Right around where the tackle was made, and it's a personal foul face mask against Hermiston. Their second penalty of the game. This is the 15-yard variety, though, and we'll move it up to the midfield stripe. So the Suns have advanced the ball as far as they've advanced it against Hermiston all night on their third drive a couple of punts and the touchdown pass a 70 yarder hand to Ile Thomas he breaks through busts forward jukes up to the 30 up to the 41 yard line just short of the 40 nine yard gain for Masio Ile Thomas they're a run team and it just it's contingent on you tackling them. A lot of time those receivers are window dressing and downfield blockers. Second down and one. Eli Thomas behind Eli Thomas, pistol set to throw. Jair over the middle, deep down the far sideline, foot race for it, incomplete. Trying to get it out to Clay Gonzalez who has the catch. Battling with Ethan Snow on that 70 yarder. So Gonzalez has got snow on him. Brendan Kelly, the senior receiver, 
is on the other side for Southridge. He comes into the game with three touchdowns, 14 catches, and 253 yards, their leading receiver. Handoff, this is Diaz back into the game, enough for a first down, needed two, he had about five. Minute 22 left in the first period. Clock is paused while the chains are moved for another first down on this drive. Bulldogs lead is 14 to seven. Trips to the left, Diaz behind Eli Thomas. The quarterback turns, hands, Diaz running to the left side, puts his shoulder down, runs through one tackle, and then is caught and dropped by the reserves. Simon helped out. Alexander was the one who had Diaz immediately, but Diaz just kept his legs turning. Second down and eight. Ball in the middle of the park at the Hermiston 34-yard line. Two wide each side. Jair Le Thomas takes a snap, rolling right to throw at the hash marks, flag out, flings it downfield, Snow turns around, it's back shoulder and incomplete, bounces off of him, then off of Clay Gonzalez, and we got a check on the marker that came from the official, he says holding, so we'll move it back 10. Yeah, that, excuse me, that time Diaz, as uh, Anto was coming across, grabbed a hold of Anto's uh, arm, pulled him around, spun him around, and the official was right there to see it. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. The holding penalty will move it back to the 48-yard line. So it ends up being from two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Shows good penetration by Hermiston up the middle because it was an interior lineman who got called for the holding. Second down and 22. Eli Thomas fakes a quick throw into the flat, flings it down the near sideline. Our defense, Costa Rodriguez has an interception. Fights off a tackler, he's still on his feet, fighting forward to the 30-yard line, about an eight-yard return. And it's been a while for Costa, but it's been a while since anybody's challenged him. They did, and he made them pay. For Rodriguez, it's his third pick of the season. Just an underthrown ball. Nineteen seconds left in the first quarter. Fourteen to seven, Hermiston. Gamble off, mortar on. Canutes will break the huddle. With Ramon Contreras to the left, Mortar and Snow to the right, short side of the field. Two in the backfield with Canutes, who takes a snap, looking to throw quickly. Contreras has it at the 35, left hash mark, and spun around down at the 39-yard line. Nine-yard gain. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter. Bulldogs 14, Sun 7. After a quarter of play, we'll flip the field and come back with the second period on 1360 KOHU. There's money hiding in your attic. At least there was in mine. And my Touchstone Energy Cooperative showed me how to properly insulate in order to keep that money from escaping in the form of heating and cooling costs. By blowing in a fresh layer of insulation, I'm saving 240 bucks a year. What can you do? Find out how the little changes add up at TogetherWeSave.com. Unitella Electric Cooperative, your Touchstone member cooperative, making life better for their members. It's the largest preseason snow tire sale ever at your Hermiston Les Schwab Tire Center. During the month of October only, you'll find the biggest savings of the year, with some savings as big as 60%. All seven snow tires in stock are on sale at your Hermiston Les Schwab Tire Center now through the end of October. No matter what type of vehicle you drive, now's the time to save on winter tires. It's the preseason snow tire sale, happening now through the end of the month at your Hermiston Les Schwab Tire Center. K-O-H-U, Hermiston. All right, they got me. <laughs> At the quarter break, 
Mike K came in and there was this running joke at the start of the year about the new stadium, whether I had my name on anything, like my chair or something like that. And Mike K has given me a chair with my name on it. We'll get to it here in a second. Bulldogs second down and one from the 39. Canutes rolling to the right to throw into the flat. Costa's got it. Breaks a tackle. He's at the 45. Breaks another. And finally up to the 47-yard line. First down for Hermiston on the eight-yard gain. So what do, what do we have here, Sonny? We've got just a chair like everybody else's, but mine now says Eric Windbag Olson, Broadcaster of the Year. <laughs> oh. What do we do? Uh, we just, missed a play. We had an interception. Yeah, he just uh, tossed the ball over the top. Over the top, over the middle, and it was, was taken there. away. Well, somebody was there. It was Tanner Pope who had the interception. That's the second one thrown by Knutes tonight. And the turnover gives Southridge the ball on the 42-yard line. First down and 10. 11.41 left in the first half. 14-7 Hermiston's lead. Jerry Lee Thomas pitches to the right. Diaz has it at the right hash mark. Bounces off of a tackler and then is stopped. Hayden Simon is able to help out on the finish with Trent Nanto. A nice job by Simon uh, making sure that they went ahead and cut back in. Now, that's the type of defense you got to have where you have the pitch man and you've got to contain him, make him turn up field. That's when Anto came back in and Simon was, uh, was able to go ahead and double back around and help make that tackle. Second and ten. Handoff Diaz running to the left. He runs right into a tackler, bounces off of him, spins across the 45, and up near midfield as he keeps turning his legs, fights forward all the way to the Hermiston 49-yard line. Yeah, and that there, there Boy, goes okay, Alexander the Adam. Yeah, that's where you go, and you, and, you know, you give up eight yards that time because you don't wrap up, and uh, you try and tackle up high. Simon and uh, Anto were able to get him down at the waist and go ahead and bounce him in. There's a situation where you're trying to tackle high. Third down and one. Hermiston territory and a timeout's going to be called. Southridge will take their second of the first half. 10.43 left in the second quarter, and it's 14 to 7. The timeout in the first half is something you don't have to protect quite as vigorously as the second half, where you got to make sure you can control the clock at the end of a game. But... Southridge is in a position right now with just one timeout left. If they need to put on a drive at the end of the first half, they're going to have a little bit of trouble doing that because they just don't have that clock controlling element of the timeout. They're down to just one. Yeah, and they, that's the one thing you really don't want to see, especially after you just pick up eight and a half big yards on a run. You know, you've got a lot of time left. No matter what you do, it's sure it's third down. This is, uh, for me, this is two-down territory for him anyway because Diaz, they have not shown that they can stop Diaz on that little uh, draw play up the middle. And, uh, you know, getting it outside has not been an issue. Third and one, Diaz dots the eye formation running right, bounces through, breaks a tackle at the 40, now running up the middle at the 30, and brought down on the left hash mark at the 26-yard line. It's more than just a first down. It's a 23-yard rumble down to the 26-yard line. Jesse Rodello makes the tackle, but too late. First down and 10 for the Suns, and they've got it down to the Hermiston 26-yard line. And now, flag out. Ball start on South, which will move them back five. Third penalty on the Suns for 20 yards. Ten and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Dogs 14, Suns 7. Rodello off, pots on. First down and 15. Diaz running right. Miss off of a tackler. Keeps fighting down to the 20-70 yard line. Gets four when he should have had none. 
Yeah, and, you know, that's where, where Hermerson is at. They're up around the shoulder pad level, Eric, and you're not going to, with a kid that's as strong as what he is right there, you are not going to be able to go ahead and make that up around the shoulders like that. He's just too strong. You know, 195-pound running back, and that keeps his legs moving. Very tough to bring down. Second and 11, play action. Eli Thomas bounces to his left, gets away from one tackler, another hit by Simon, throws it, knocked away. Coverage on the play for Tyler McCabe, looking for Bauman. And Eli Thomas is just as tough to tackle as Diaz and his brother. But in that case, McCabe is there to make the stop, third down and 11. And now for Southridge, you need a bit of yardage if you even want to get into Nate Newbury territory. Eli Thomas rolling to the right, outside the hash marks to throw to the sideline. It is going to be caught, and just getting his tippy toes in, Brendan Kelly. Fans don't like it, but he did. In fact, he caught it, then looked down, Sonny, immediately below him to watch where his toes were going to land. Yeah, he did a very good job that time of uh, making sure his feet got down and, you know, picking up nine yards of what they needed there and a very good job of uh, getting those feet down. Fourth down and two. Four down territory. Right hash mark from the 18-yard line. Hermiston trying to adjust. Eye formation behind Eli Thomas. Handed to Diaz, running to his left. Bounces back to his right, down the right hash mark inside the 10. As he's spun head over heels by Contreras. But not before he gets down to the 7-8 yard line. Got a 10-yard carry and a first down. First and goal now for the Suns. Yeah, that's good hard nose uh, running right over the top of the left guard and center that time, Eric, and just taking it into the teeth of our defense. Ball offset to the right side of the field from the 7, first and goal. Two wide right and a man alone to the left. Thomas will pitch and it's Eli Thomas running to the left side on the pitch play inside the pile on left for the score. Calling an eight yard touchdown run from Azeel Eli Thomas. With 9-11 left in the second quarter and the Suns are an extra point away from tying the game. Out of the hold of Trenton Nett is the junior Nate Newbury. The junior holder has the snap, tees it up. The kick is easily through to tie it at 14 apiece. And that's a big roll there. You don't necessarily talk about it a lot, but Nate Newbury, the junior kicker for Southridge, what he's doing is he's jumping in to a role that's been held by a guy named Mertens, not just for a couple of years. Connor Mertens was the last one of a line of Mertens who kicked for Southridge and kicked well for Southridge. And uh, last year, Mertens, the coach, Tony Rebolt said, when he doesn't kick it into the end zone, he gets mad. Because that's his, he was able to put it on the one or inside the end zone. And Rebolt said a year ago, you know, that was part of their defense. Was it, made the offense always go 80? Well, you know, and watching uh, uh, Newberry uh, warm up tonight, I tell you what, I told Joe, I said, watch this uh, kicker, you know, left-footed kicker, and he was kicking from the uh, for his own 45 down towards his own end zone, and he was uh, consistently, Eric, putting it out past the end line back there. Lefty kicker from the left hash mark will boot this one back over to the uh, left side for Hermiston, Costa Rodriguez. And he's going to hand off on a reverse, come into the middle of the field. C.J. Flores tripped up at the 27-yard line. I don't believe my eyes, Sonny. <laughs> Two weeks ago, for the first time ever, we saw a fake punt since Mark Hodges took over. I don't recall a reverse. And maybe... You know, that's just as as you heard in the pregame in the tailgate program from Micah Mercer, he's started to get more controls over the special teams, and now he's got all the special teams controls under his name. 
And so now he's doing goofy stuff like reverses. But it was good to get him up to the 28-yard line. First down and 10. Play action. Kadutz to throw. Time. Runs over the middle. Way too far for everybody. Incomplete. Closest to Tanner Pope, who almost had two interceptions on two consecutive Kadutz picks. Ethan Snow was the one on the route, but nowhere close. Second down and 10. Now, that, that, was, that one there should have been thrown about 10 yards earlier when Ethan first broke in the clear right across the middle and underneath before he ran in to the double coverage. Second and 10. Kadutz hands off to Costa Rodriguez. Edges back to the middle. He's at 35 40. Breaks through up the 50. Down the near sideline 40. At the 30. 25 20. One man to beat at the 10. There's a He'll be left too. sold out of bounds by Brandon Zane. About the five yard line is where he gets to. Mark it at the six. They started on the 33. Sixty, uh, 61 yards. First down and goal from the six. Left hash mark set. Hand it to Anto. Run into left side. Bounces back away from one tackler inside the five. Oh, there's fights strength. forward. And give him an extra yard or two on that second and third effort. Up to the two. It's a nice little four-yard uh, crash there, Eric. I tell you what, there was some offensive linemen moving a lot of people up front that time, especially the big, the big two men right up the middle. Second down and goal from the two. Left hash mark again. Play action. Thrown low and incomplete. And Knutz, I guess that was looking for Gamble. And he had Green wide open in the flat on the outside out there. Third down and goal. Gamble's the tight end. He flips over to the left. Keegan Crafton's the tight end to the right. Contreras, the lone receiver to the left, short side of the field. Green, the H back to the left of Knutes. And Anto, the deep man. Anto takes the handoff, running left, bounces off of one tackle, then is tripped up. The man who is stiff-armed away, Kellen Itala, was able to get him at the ankles and drop him for a loss to the six. Loss of three. Fourth down and goal. Left hash mark set. Well in range. 7.45 left in the second quarter. In a 14-all game, Hermiston's going to go for it. And what they're going to do is force Southridge to take their last time out of the first half. And that's huge there now, Eric, because they, exactly like you said, and they burned all theirs up. There's still uh, well over seven and a half minutes left in this uh, first half. And if they are driving, they're, uh, they're going to have to rely upon incomplete passes. Mark Hodges to our right, the six-year head coach. 29 years in the coaching industry. Burnley, Nevada for a handful of years before he came here. In fact, he and Southridge headman Tony Rebolt were the finalists here at Hermiston after the David Lewis era ended. But Mark Hodges right now has a decision to make. It appears that they're going to be running offense here. From the left hash mark, Medina does have a tendency to pull. And so a left hash mark kick is a tougher kick for him than the right side. Right side, you'd be incredibly comfortable with this. Fourth down and goal from the six. Left hash mark set. Contreras, the receiver, wide to the right. Crafton and Gamble, the tight ends, left and right respectively. Costa, the deep man. Kadutz turns, hands to Costa, bounces out to his left. It's a foot race to the pylon. He'll get into the end zone. They showed it like it was inside zone, and Costa busted out to the outside. Whether it was supposed to be inside zone or not, Costa got the job done. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a nice job of running and, and running away from everybody that time. And he faked it in, and which got the defender to go ahead and take the inside route on it. And I believe you're right, Eric, it was supposed to be inside. And that's where the linebacker went, was inside. Once he got that linebacker inside, he was able to go ahead and outrun this. 
Cool. Medina's kick is up. It is through. Bulldogs back out in front by seven in a 21 to 14 game. You get the feeling though, this thing ain't over with that much scoring. We got 7:36 left in the first half. Who wants, to, who wants to make the defensive stops? And, and that's what the game currently has the feel of is who can make the stop or, or who has the ball last is kind of that cliche. You know, and I, and I think you can hear it through, you know, even though he's in his, uh, in his cubicle right next to us and the doors are closed, the windows are down. Uh, Coach Mark Hodges, I believe, is wondering the same thing. You know, he's wanting that. He's trying to will that stop out there. And I know he was talking to David Fontete, you know, during that time there. And now he says, this is the time for that big defensive stop. Well, this is the time, it, it, the Southridge week, before Hood River next week for homecoming, then Pendleton, then the postseason. And there will be some semblance of a postseason. If Hermiston wins their last three games, they'll be in the top eight. I'll guarantee that. I've done the math. And they'll get a first round bye, and they'll be in the round of 16. If they drop a game or two down the stretch, they might have to play a playing game, but they're playing past the Pendleton game. Mm -hmm. Medina's kick. Now going into what is a very light breeze. Drives it back to the five-yard line. Kelly running at the 10-15. This is Gonzalez actually at the 20, and he's flipped down. Harmon makes the stop after a return of 16. 22-yard line is where Southridge will start. 21-14. And Hermiston, you heard it in the pre-game coverage with Micah Mercer. And Mark Hodges talked about it as well. He talked about it at linebackers this week. Their kickoff coverage is probably their best special teams aspect of a very good overall special teams squad. First down and 10 from the pistol. Turn in hand. Diaz running right. He is going to spin off of a tackler out of an arm tackle. Push forward at the 25. Spin again at the 30. He breaks away from another tackler. Cuts back to the inside at the 40 down to the 42-yard line. 7-7. 17 left in the second quarter, and it seems like everybody's trying to strip the ball as opposed to tackling Caden Diaz. 19-yard run that time, uh, Eric, and you're exactly right. We saw three guys going out to the football that time instead of getting in there and, you know, you, you could have stopped it, uh, you know, 10 yards earlier. Up oh, there's a holding, looks like. Is Hermiston going to get bailed? That They are. And, and I don't know if all 11 guys missed a tackle on that play initially, but it sure looked like it. Sure did. And they're going to get bailed out with a holding penalty by Southridge. For the Suns, it's their second. And the Gates had great 19-yard run Huge by Diaz. Run. First down and 18. It was two yards downfield where the holding was called. Diaz again running right. Cuts back to the middle, right in the middle of the field. He's going to get stopped but still is able to fight forward to the 18-yard line and for you, about five. And you saw where the three Hermerston uh, players were at, Eric. They're up at his head and his shoulders right now. You know, you cannot deal with that there. It, that, that's what's going to hurt you later in the game, and, and it's already showed uh, hurt right now. Under seven minutes left in the first half, 21-14. to 14. Bulldogs up by a touchdown. Jerry Lay Thomas to throw. Over the middle on a slanting complete. Wanted Gonzalez and just didn't quite get it there, but he had time to throw. That pressure on the first two drives, Southridge has made an adjustment, and they're getting better pass protection for Jair Lay Thomas to throw. And, you know, he, he just was high on the pass. You know, he, he's been high on the pass the last couple of passes, but again, you're right. Much better adjustment to protecting the passer. Third down and 14 at the 19 to throw in the pocket. Lots of time. Deep downfield launches it. It is underthrown. Snow goes up. Did he pick it? No. Incomplete. It turned Brendan Kelly into a defensive back because Snow got the inside coverage. And I thought to myself, boy, he threw that ball far. And he did. He threw it probably about 40 yards when you consider cross field and everything yep. on a line. But it was still underthrown because he left. He got at it out too late. His receiver had outrun his ability to throw the ball. Punt on fourth down and 14. Spiva back 
That is five. Snap is there. The kick is away. It's a spinner. Contreras will let it bounce. It checks up right at midfield and will roll just across the midfield stripe of the left hash mark where it is picked up by Ty Ward, the senior lineman for Southridge. And it gives the ball to Hermiston with 50 yards and 6 inches to pay dirt. Up 21 to 14. 6.20 left of the second quarter. Well, uh, I... For me, Eric, where their position is right now, go for Ramon right now. He's single coverage outside and he's got the wide field where he can do a, a post and get into a little bit of a, a coverage situation there. Anto's going to come stand to the right of Caduce. Green to the left, shifts out to the right side. Snow right, Contreras left to throw. Pumps, pulls it down. Knutz comes to the left side, and he'll run out of bounds, essentially right at the line of scrimmage. He's told, don't take hits. And he didn't take a hit. And he got it right back. You know what? I think he got three inches. Right down three inches for Knutz on that run. <laughs> inch by inch, he's going to get back to a career positive yardage to run for. He complained about that last week down in Springfield. He said, it doesn't matter how much I run for. I'm always going to be in the negative for my career. Second out and 10. I said, don't get sacked so much. Anto, the handoff, gets across midfield down to the 47-yard line. I know that's not his fault, but that was the joke. He and the Hodges and I were joking on the field during warm-ups. Third down and... About seven to go for Hermiston. Left hash mark set, the Southridge 47. Kadutz turns play action, rolling to the right under some pressure. He will fling it to the sideline too far for snow incomplete. Five minutes, 38 seconds left in the uh, second period. Dogs up 21 to 14. Punt crew will come out for Hermiston. And Brandon Zane, the junior, will be back to receive, but again, Contreras can put Southridge with a deep field to drive on from his 40. Rolling to the right, he will boot it away. A little squiver, it's gonna bounce, it's gonna stop. Hermiston's gonna fall on top of it. Like it can anybody touch it? Well, it looks like it hit the Southridge player's heel and checked back this way. One official said yes, it did. Because Hermiston fell on top of it. It's Hermiston ball. Yeah, it looked like it did hit the Southridge player on the heel as he's taking a beautiful little knuckleball kicked out there and flopping around. And then when it come down, it definitely hit something and chipped back for about a yard and, and it was a Southridge heel. So the Bulldogs with the ball in the Southridge 22, first down and 10. Shifting up front in the defensive line. Knutz rolling to the right on play action. To the corner of the end zone for Snow, incomplete, too far at the pylon. Bulldogs attacking right to left with 523 remaining in the second quarter of this final non-conference game. When you play in a four-team league, you play conference all season. 21 to 14, Hermiston's advantage. Good crowd here tonight. Kittison Field at Bulldog Stadium. Second down and 10. It's homecoming next week. Caduce takes a snap. Flips to the near sideline incomplete behind Contreras. Well, he made some nice throws early, but these last couple have been a bit off. Yeah, he's uh, he's hurrying his throw right now. That one there on the pass that has been bread and butter for him. Dude, just a quick out. Um, he hurried it too much. The other ones that he was throwing out long, he's got to get rid of that one quicker because he's getting it. Third and ten now. Canutes turns, flips to Snow on the far sideline at the hash mark 20, and he'll be brought down near the 15-yard line. Well, it's on the right hash mark this time. Be looking about a little bit more than a 30-yarder. A little more than five minutes left in the second quarter. Fourth down and four, 21 to 14, Hermiston's lead. And now Hermiston is going to call a timeout. A little bit more time to talk 
about this one. And does Luis Medina get a chance to pound one through? He wants in. Scott Hammond, the third year defensive backs coach, put his hand up to Luis and said, hold on. Looks like we're going to stay offense on this one. You know what, I, Eric, uh, if, I, if I'm right now, I'm, uh, you know, Hermerson's been able all year long to get that hard count penalty. That's what I'm thinking right now. If they don't get the hard count penalty, they'll t call another timeout, and they'll go ahead and kick this thing. They're going to bring in the uh, heavy package. Gamble and uh, Keegan Crafton. Landon Gamble, Keegan Crafton to be at tight ends. <laughs> After last week's kick returns, maybe this is where you put Damian Martinez in the backfield. Yeah, yeah that would be a good point. He can't snap the ball, though, and run it. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you can go under center and just have that uh, roll it back and hand it right back to your center. out. Anto's the deep man. Green to the right of Knutes. Right hash mark from the 22. A flag's out. For delay of game out of a timeout. Penalty marker on the play. Wow. Huh? They're going to kick it now. Yeah, you can hear it. Where... <laughs> I, I guess the question would be, where was the ready-to-play yeah, whistle? I think that's what the Hermiston coaching staff's frustration is right now. Yeah, I don't think, uh, we didn't hear one, and we sure as heck didn't see the official in the back raise a hand up. Nobody saw that. All right, so Medina's going to try from the right hash mark. The hold will be at the 20... Eight yard line. This is going to be a 38 yarder. Longest of the season if he hits it. He's got the distance for sure. Snaps a little bit behind. The hold is down. The kick is up. No. Wide to the right. 4.55 left in the second quarter. That was a timing thing. The snap was behind McCammy and he had to reach for it, pull it back in front. And Medina had to stop for just a second on his run up. So the Bulldogs still with a seven point lead, 21 to 14. Back on defense with 4.55 left in the first half. Who was that, 27 yards, Eric? 38, try. 38, okay. From the 28, 38 yard try. Run to the left side for Southridge. Caden Diaz muscles forward down the left hash mark. About an eight yard gain. Simon in on the stop. Brendan Kelly, the receiver, alone to the right, two to the left. Hand off Diaz. He's going to be stuck this time, and he'll be dropped for a loss. Loses two, back to the 26. Wilson was at the point of attack along with Anto for Hermist and then Potts got in there from the linebacking core. He's at the middle linebacker spot right now. Third down and five. Thomas bumps into a blocker. He'll flip it downfield. Wide open. Bauman catches it down the near sideline. He's tripped up and out before midfield. 29 yards, excuse me, 24 yard gain on the pass to Jake Bauman. The senior actually give him, give him the full 25 because he gets it down to the Hermiston 49 yard line after the spot. 3.53 left in the second period. Bulldogs up by a touchdown, trying to preserve that. Diaz up the middle, and he'll bounce forward. It's not really a Super Bowl because he doesn't bounce off of tacklers. He kind of just rolls over them. It's a bull in a china shop with Diaz with the handoff right now. Well, Two-yard you know, gain, second and eight. And that's the one thing. He's beating us to the punch. He's making us remember who's uh, hitting who. Two wide left side. Jair Eli Thomas to throw. Flips one hard of the middle off the hands of Baum and incomplete. Third 
down and eight. They had a third down and mid-range that they converted. It's going to be third down and long range this time. With three minutes and 20 seconds left in the second period. Bulldogs up by seven at 21 to 14. This is not necessarily four down territory yet at the midfield area. From the Hermiston 47, Eli Thomas to throw, rolling to the left in the middle of the field to the near sideline incomplete. Brendan Kelly, the receiver, intended, but it was not close to him. And a little bit of pushing and shoving by the interior linemen both sides. Everybody seems to be okay. The White Hat talked to them all. Fourth down and eight, and the punt crew will come back out. Now, I had mused about the trickery from Hermiston earlier that we almost never saw. I mean, that's all in special teams, but, <laughs> but Southridge is a team that will do some, some goofy stuff. Fourth down and eight from the Hermiston 47. Ramon Contreras about his own 10. Steve it a kick. He'll get it away. A little bit of pressure. It's a knuckleball itself. Bounces at the 20, inside the 20, inside the 15. Takes the Southridge roll down to the 12, maybe the 11 yard line. Good punt, got the job done. In the uh, stat book, it's 32 yards, but it pins Hermiston at their 11. And that's exactly what you want to try and do, is you want to try and go ahead and flip the field on this, which they were able to go ahead and, uh, and do, pinning Hermiston deep in their own territory. Each team with a rushing touchdown in this period, but Hermiston's got the seven-point lead at 21-14. to 304 left, Caduce takes a snap, turns and hands, Anto running right. He will get stopped after a couple. Number one, Tristan Anto on the carry. At the ankles. He was tackled by the linebacker, Jervis. Done in there. Two yard gain, second and eight. Blitz coming off the edge. Anto running to the left away from the blitz, gets across the 15, puts his shoulder down. Hermiston's power runner up to the 18 yard line. About a six yard gain and a third and short on the way. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. Also there, number 53, Rick Green to the left, and a step in front of Caduce. Costa Rodriguez, the deep man, takes a handoff running right. He will get stopped short of the 20, maybe a yard running behind the right guard. And that was a position that Hermiston is thin at. Brad Brown is not back yet. And the JV guys just weren't quite getting the job done, so they have flipped... In some cases, Dylan Caldwell into guard from left tackle, and they put Cesar Lopez out at left tackle in Caldwell's place. Caldwell's an all-leaguer for Hermiston. Fourth down in inches. Contreras, though, will punt from his 10. Boots this one away and well, and nobody back for Southridge. It'll take oh a Hermiston boy. roll inside the 30-yard line. Just barely. Just barely still counts. Yep. It is a 49-yard punt for Ramon Contreras. And with a minute and 31 seconds left, Southridge no timeouts, trailing 21 to 14. Has 70 yards to go to Pater. Now they have a 70-yard touchdown. Jair Early, Eli Thomas hooked up with Clay Gonzalez who ripped it away from Ethan Snow and went the distance. Play action to throw for Kelly. No, he'll dump it off short, and it will be caught. First touch of the night for Andrew Stayrook. The junior wide receiver, Stayrook, has it up to the 43-yard line. 13-yard game. And they got to wait for Masili Le Thomas to get off the field. Trips left, first down and 10. Jair Le Thomas takes a snap, turns, hands, Diaz running right, breaks one tackle, and he'll be stopped. No gain. Wilson and Alexander on the stop. Under a minute left now, second down and 11. No, it should be third down. High snap over his head. Eli Thomas goes back. 
and he'll fall on top of it at the 26 yard line. Clock still spinning, 45 seconds left. It should be fourth down. It should be fourth down. Well, there was an incompletion, wasn't there? Yeah. It says third down. Did I miscount? Well, Caden Diaz takes a handoff, running left, breaks away from one tackle, spins around, still on his feet, fighting forward, and he's going to be dropped back at the 23-yard line. Eight seconds left. Hermiston will take his time out. And so it's fourth down and a country mile. And so Hermiston's going to try to get a punt return before the half, up 21 to 14. I'm still going back trying to remember if there was an incompletion I missed. No, I don't or, think so. Or I created in my head. I think you were hoping there was one. I was hoping there was one. I created one in my head. It's not the first time. All right. Fourth down and 27. Now... There is... I was going to say, is there a punting change? There is not. It is uh, the freshman, Hunter Spiva. And we'll see if the Bulldogs want to come after this one. He punts from his own about 10. They've gotten a couple of blocks this year. Just seven seconds left in the first half. Contreras is back. It is 40. They did bring pressure, but he gets it away. Contreras will take it. Coming to the left in the middle of the field. As the buzzer goes, he'll come back to his right and is stopped. No return. Connor Grigg makes the tackle. And Hermiston will go into the locker room with a 21-14 lead. Some positives, some frustrations, but they've got the lead in the locker room. And obviously with the feeling that there are things that they can continue to improve on here tonight against the Southridge Suns. Hermiston got the scoring started. Twice tonight, Chase Cadutes to Ramon Contreras. Jair Thomas, a 70-yarder to Clay Gonzalez. Cadutes' second was a 71-yarder to Contreras, although Ramon did most of the running on that one. And it is a 21-14 lead for the Bulldogs at the half. When we come back on the halftime program, Jake Pusey, the uh, cross-country head man, will talk about his squad and the Richland Invite, which is tomorrow up in the Tri-Cities. That's to come on our coverage after this on 1360 KOHU. It's important to keep your vehicle running at peak performance. At Swain Motors, you can rely on GM factory trained technicians for all of your GM warranty work, including Chevy and Oldsmobile vehicles. The service department at Swain Motors can repair most makes and models, so you know your vehicle will perform at its best. And remember, all service includes a free wash and vacuum of your vehicle. Call the Swain Motors service department today for your next appointment. Swain Motors, North Highway 395, Hermiston. Hey, Jeff. I told you that weather's going to change. You did, but it's not freezing cold like you were carrying on about in the Hermiston Glass ad. Fine. But mark my words, it will be. And people can prepare by calling Hermiston Glass. They can fix leaky, drafty windows or replace them with energy-efficient windows. that will save them money all year long in energy costs. Winter will be here before you know it. Call Hermiston Glass today. CCB 147-211. KOHU, Hermiston. 
Join us now in our halftime coverage, uh, Jake Pizzi, head coach of the Hermiston Cross Country Program. The Richland invite to tomorrow for the squad and a few more weeks before districts. And then at the uh, start of uh, November, the uh, state championships down in Eugene. When you look at where you're at as far as the season progressing, how would you, how would you characterize this season so far? Uh, I'd say I'd say we're where we want to be at this point in the season. Uh, everything we've been doing has been uh, intended to build up to to this meet this weekend. Um, hopefully to to build momentum going into districts and state. And so um, we we try and just build on one week at a time. And this is kind of our last last hurrah, our last big invitational. And then we can do a little bit more work and, and try and be fresh and ready to go at districts and estates. So, what have I, you learned about your team so far this season? Um, I, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with with some of our younger guys. Um, it, I, I honestly thought that we we might even have to <laughs> split them up at times and, and just there were so many freshmen, sophomores, uh, and a couple juniors, but but there's there's Alex and Jose, and then there was everyone else, and um, and quite a few of them just with a couple years of uh, training under their belts, and and just with the the need to step up, have stepped up, and so uh, the team as a whole is looking better than than I was expecting on the guy side, on the girl side. Um, we still got some work to do. But I feel like based on where we're at and where we were at the beginning of the season, we're, we're moving in the right direction. And yeah, it, it's going to be a fight even to get through the state. This is by far the most competitive the CRC has been on either side, men or women. And so, I mean, it's possible that we could be as good a team as last year and maybe not even get through the CRC. But I, I think our ladies are, are ready and they, they're putting in the work and, and beginning to see the results. Be. How important is the numbers? Like you said, uh, you have so many, especially right now, of the young kids coming through. But those numbers for your program, when when you get to a varsity, you know, district meet, where you can put seven out there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, numbers are huge, and um, fortunately, we've got some some great people at the middle schools building those numbers up. Um, Sherry Wick has been at Sandstone the last couple of years, which has provided continuity between the programs. And, and this year, Brooke Felzinski is at Armin Larvey. And right now we have more middle schoolers than high schoolers, which is something we've never um, had. And I think part of the urgency, at least on the guys' side, is that they realize there's three or four middle schoolers that are going to be freshmen next year that could be in our top five right now. And so they realize that uh, just because and Jose are graduating, they're not going to be handed the varsity spot. They, they may have to work even harder than they are right now just to maintain the varsity spot, which is exactly where we want to be. Work never hurt anyone. So. On the boys' side, when you look at this specific meet in Richland tomorrow, what, what do you need to see accomplished to know that you guys are ready for that final push? Really, all we're looking for is progress, and, and that's the beauty of the sport, and particularly the the fact that it's an individual team sport. We, we're splitting up our guy squad because we're deeper than we've been in years, and so we've got some of them running in the the Division One race and some of them running in the Division Two race just so that we can have them mi mix it up with each other. Um, and so we just want to see progress. And then we've, we, we also have a deeper ladies team than we've had the last few years, and what we want to see there is just closing the gap between one and two and and so on and so uh, as long as we're moving forward which our workout yesterday indicated that we are um, and our races last weekend indicated that we are we're we're pretty pleased with with where we're at but also know there's still some work to be done to be where we need to be in, in a couple of weeks so maybe maybe I'm wrong about this, but it sounds like, you know, for tomorrow, that team score isn't nearly as important as what the watch says when one of the guys or gals crosses the line. 
Yeah, and, and it's not just the watch. Um, I mean, that, that helps, and, and Richland is a really competitive race. There's there's over 50 teams and, and several nationally ranked teams and nationally ranked individuals will be there. And so, yeah, we, we definitely want to be in the mix, but um, we've intentionally tried to stay off the radar and intentionally tried to... It's, it's, it's one of the advantages of being so close to Washington, and we were in Yakima last week, and we're in Richland this week while everyone else is in Portland. Um, it, it, I, I like being the underdog. I like not having a target on our back. It takes a lot of pressure off of the kids. I, I'm able to sleep a little bit more too. And, uh, so, you know, it's, a it's, it's good for everyone. So yeah, we, we really just want to, to go in and, and compete and, and then we'll come together as a team. But, but ideally we'd like as many people to have the opportunity to, to be in the mix for the win of a race or to be the number one runner on our team in that particular race so that when we do all come together there's not an established pecking order it's sort of like yeah it's on let's let's go and the, the most successful teams we've had have been teams where there's been a battle for that number one spot or that number five spot or whatever rather than just okay let's show up and we all get a spot just for coming out and that, that's not healthy so you talk about coming under the radar, though. It, it does seem like it would be very tough for Alejandro and Jose to be under the radar in Oregon once we get to that point. Oh, definitely. Um, that being said, they've only raced once against other top Oregonians. Sure. And, and they're confident. I mean, they they were in the mix for about two and a half miles, and, and that was off of just base training. We've intentionally tried to just race them every other weekend, and even when they've registered for races, they haven't really exerted themselves entirely, um, most of the races, intentionally, because there's only about a four-week window where physiologically and psychologically it's possible to maintain that peak, and and the hope is their seasons will extend beyond districts and state, and, and potentially they'll qualify for the national um, championships in December, so that's what we're looking at long-term for them, so that's why they haven't been in the headlines <laughs> so that they can continue their seasons beyond the state meet. Well, as, uh, as you said, uh, this season has quite a bit more to it, so we'll get another chance to catch up with you as uh, we progress, but uh, we appreciate the time for now. Thank you, Eric. And Coach Jake Pizzi of the Hermiston Cross Country Program going to be at the Richland Invitational tomorrow. We'll take a break when we come back. First half stats will get you ready for second half action. Hermiston hosting Southridge tonight at Kennison Field, the Bulldog Stadium on 1360 KOHU. It can come with no noticeable symptoms, and it's the second most common cause of blindness in the U.S. It is glaucoma. This is Dr. Colin Eric with Lifetime Vision Source. We encourage regular eye exams, especially critical for those over 60, people with diabetes, and anyone with a family history of glaucoma. While there is no cure for glaucoma, early detection and treatment can slow or prevent further vision loss. Lifetime Vision Source, professional staff, personal care. Lifetime Vision Source, now a provider for iMed Vision Insurance. Agriculture is more than a business, it's a way of life. From the food on our tables to the clothes on our backs, we all depend on agriculture. We believe in agriculture. We invest in it. We've been making ag loans since the day we first opened our doors for business. Making things grow is what you do, and it's what we do too. Old West Federal Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. When you grow, we grow. Chevrolet's new tagline is Find New Roads. Well, Show Chevrolet is doing just that. We are moving, making it easier yet to take a look at what a great product Chevrolet is putting on the road. There are many to choose from, including the new design 2014 Silverado. This fall, Show Chevrolet will be opening our new facility on 395 North in Hermiston. Thanks to our loyal customers, we are able to continue to serve the community and offer a better and easier way to purchase a vehicle. Our new location will be larger and comes with the same friendly and honest service we've had for the last 68 years. Show Chevrolet, 16 years and growing. 
Are you ready for number one? Then you're ready for Steel, the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. Steel makes over 30 models of chainsaws designed for homeowners and professionals, and your servicing Steel dealer can match you with the model that's right for your needs. Don't settle for the number of other brands at the big box stores. Get the world's number one selling brand of chainsaw at your local Steel dealer. Are you ready for a Steel? Find a full line of Steel chainsaws at Smitty's Ace Hardware, where they know and service the product they sell. KOHU Hermiston. Halftime at uh, Hermiston High School's Kennison Field, the Bulldog uh, Stadium. 21 to 14. Dogs up on the Suns. I'm Eric Olson. He's uh, Sunny Levy. We join you from the highest occupiable building in Hermiston. First half. Hermiston starts off. Drives down, Chase Knutes to Ramon Contreras, a 34-yarder to cap a quick drive. 7-0, 49 seconds into the game. Everything's coming up roses. Hermiston forces a punt, but uh, then they give the ball back, and Jair Eli Thomas throws one deep down the field. Clay Gonzalez rips it away from Ethan Snow, and the game's tied at seven apiece. And we're just barely over three minutes into the game at that point. Hermiston would get one big play strike of their own. A 71-yarder, as Knutes and Contreras say to Eli Thomas and Gonzalez, anything you can do, I can do better. And made Hermiston a 14-7 leader going into the second quarter. Each team a rushing touchdown in the second period. Maciel Eli Thomas and uh, Contreras, excuse me, and Costa Rodriguez each pound one in from inside the 10. 21 to 14, Hermiston's lead at the half, and Sonny, I would say that good, not great. Good, not great. I mean, yeah, we made some adjustments, which uh, forced them to go ahead and uh, uh, change their defensive scheme or their offensive scheme just a little bit on how they were going to protect their quarterback. But again, we're seeing where they're coming in over the top of the linebackers that are that are making that hard pressure and being able to get their yardage down up underneath, uh, you know, which is good again. We're keeping them contained. Well, but the thing we're not doing though is not tackling Caden Diaz well. He is bouncing off of tacklers, and his yards after contact is probably nearly all the yardage he has here tonight. We'll get you the stats, and we'll get you a look around the state at the scoreboard. A Lifetime Vision Source scoreboard is up after this. Break on 1360 KOHU. There's money hiding in your attic. At least there was in mine. And my Touchstone Energy Cooperative showed me how to properly insulate in order to keep that money from escaping in the form of heating and cooling costs. By blowing in a fresh layer of insulation, I'm saving 240 bucks a year. What can you do? Find out how the little changes add up at TogetherWeSave.com. Umatilla Electric Cooperative, your Touchstone member cooperative, making life better for their members. It's important to keep your vehicle running at peak performance. At Swain Motors, you can rely on GM factory trained technicians for all of your GM warranty work, including Chevy and Oldsmobile vehicles. The service department at Swain Motors can repair most makes and models, so you know your vehicle will perform at its best. And remember, all service includes a free wash and vacuum of your vehicle. Call the Swain Motors service department today for your next appointment. Swain Motors, North Highway 395, Hermiston. Hey, Fest fans, Amy Clausen here for the Buy Mall Willamette Country Music Festival. Get your 2014 tickets now and see headliners Gary Allen, Eric Church, Blake Shelton, and more. Premium GA tickets are now available for a limited time for only $140. Call the box office or stop by Buy Mall for your general admission tickets, just $105. I can't wait to see y'all at the 2014 Buy Mall Willamette Country Music Festival. Let's get our country on. Brought to you by the Pepe Group of Companies. Did you know you could save money just for being a safe driver? If you choose Vanishing Deductible from Allied Insurance, you can. Allied Insurance will reduce your deductible by $100 for every year of safe driving. In fact, driving safely can make your deductible vanish completely. See ISU, the Stratton Agency, Hermiston, Pendleton, and online at stratton-insurance.com. Products underwritten by Allied Property and Casualty Insurance Company in the Philippines, Des Moines, Iowa. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review and approval. Vanishing Deductible is an optional feature. Annual credit subject to eligibility requirements. Max credit $500. Details and availability vary by state. 
KOHU, Hermiston. Back at the halftime show, it's going to be a little bit extended. I don't think we can start the three-minute uh, stretching period yet, as we still have the marching band just clearing the field right now. Let's do uh, stats first. First half statistics. Sunny. Well, here, I'll, I'll get mine in. Uh, 11 first downs for Hermiston, 10 for Southridge. Four penalties against the Suns for 30 yards. Three penalties against Hermiston for 25 yards. Bulldogs, a fumble that they kept and two interceptions thrown by Chase Kadutz. For Southridge, they lost a fumble on a punt return and an interception thrown for them as well as Costa took an underthrown ball away. Regular uh, stats there. Uh for Southridge, 23 rushes for 124 yards. Um, Caden Diaz, of course, you know, 16 rushes that first half for 74 yards and very hard fought yards, uh, being very tough to bring down. Uh, Ely Thomas had uh, five rushes for 35 yards. Uh, and Jair Ely Thomas, uh, two for 15 for 23 rushes, 124 yards. Jair uh, Ely Thomas also 7 for 17 from the air, 143 yards, has an interception and a touchdown. The receivers, biggest receivers for uh, Southridge is one for Brendan Kelly, one for nine yards. Uh, Clay Ta Gonzalez had the one touchdown, one reception for 70 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Maceo Ely Thomas had two for 18 yards, and Bauman had two for 33. For Hermiston, and again, and again uh, seven receptions, 143 yards. For Hermiston, uh, um, on their offense, 13 rushes, 152 yards. We had uh, Chase Knutz, one for zero. Trent Nanto, eight for 62. Costa Rodriguez, one for 82. Uh, uh, or, excuse me, he had six for 82 yards uh, on that. And, you know, d just a, uh, a good night, a six-yard TD, TD run. Tony Green, one for four. And Sam Colbray, two for four. Passing-wise, Chase Knutes, eight for 17 for 168 yards, two TDs and two interceptions. Ramon Contreras, three catches, 114 yards in that first first half, the two TDs. Ethan Snow, two for 37. Costa, one for eight. Uh, Tony Green, one for two. Trent Nanto, one for a minus two. And uh, Carson Mortar, one for nine. So nine receptions, 168 yards. For the, uh, for the first half there, Hermiston, 30 total plays for 320 yards compared to Southridge's 40 total plays, 267 yards. Right before we start the second half, some of the important scores. Hepner 8, Stanfield 7. They're into the third quarter. Continue on the Lifetime Vision Source scoreboard at the half. Pendleton 21, Hood River Valley 7. Last night it was the Dowls in non-conference play beating Jefferson 36-21. to 21. Other 5A scores of note. Maris 21, Churchill 7 into the second half of play. Liberty 14, Sandy 7. That one's at Sandy. St. Ellen's 27, Putnam 13, Mountain View 22, Summit 7, Ashland 50, Sutherland 0, drive home safely, Sherwood 35, Wilsonville 0. And a couple of the uh, top 10 games from the 5A last night. Number 2, West Albany beats Dallas 14-7. Number 4, Silverton pounds Woodburn 53-zip. Number 6, Crescent Valley tops South Albany 55-21. And number 10, Roosevelt all over Franklin 57-6. The kick by Hermiston is away. It'll be taken by Gonzalez on the left hash at the 15-yard uh, line. He stopped and dropped right there. C.J. Flores on the coverage for Hermiston, and we see it again, and it's all night long. Hermiston's kick coverage has shined. And nice thing that pins them deep into their own territory. Great uh, protection out there by the contain man. When he hadn't made that uh, step up, he uh, tried to make it outside, pinned him on the corner, and just nailed him. 
Asilile Thomas to the left along with uh, Brendan Kelly. Play action rolling to the right, thrown over the middle. Ely Thomas has it at the 30, spin around off a tackle into the middle of the field to the 33-yard line where the black shirts dump him. Southridge moving left to right. As we start the second half, trailing 21 to 14, they get a first down on that play. Simon and Harmon and Potts, the linebackers, two of the three of them in on the tackle. Two wide left side on first down and 10 and a flag out. And Costa Rodriguez in the near sidelines indicating that's against Southridge. Southridge knows it, they're already backing up. Five yards on the false start. That was a nice little drag underneath, Eric, on the on that first offensive play by Southridge. They went ahead and flowed all right to this side on a naked bootleg and then uh, brought the running back from the opposite side right across the middle where the linebackers vacated. Trent Anto, Damian Martinez at the ends, Dylan Caldwell and Trey Wilson at the tackles. Hand off Caden Diaz up the middle, and he'll get across the 30 to the 31, about a two-yard gain. But a second down and 13 faces Southridge. The quarterback, Jair Ile Thomas, has thrown a couple of uh, balls well and has the one interception. Brendan Kelly, his top target all season, is wide to the right, locked up with Costa Rodriguez. On second down and 13, Costa keeps backing up here. Some space, the handoff, Diaz running left again. He'll be stopped. Much better job of tackling that time. Slid down and got it at the waist, and then the cleanup come in by... Uh Potts did the cleanup. It was yeah. Dylan Caldwell who got in at the ankles and was able to bring Diaz down. Give him two. Third down and 12. Opening drive of the second half. The Suns deferred after winning the coin toss. Eli Thomas to throw. Sets over the middle. Deep ball. It is dropped. Masia Lele Thomas across midfield was underthrown a little bit, and he might be hurt. There was no contact on the play, but he rolled over. He is. Now he looked like he hit real hard. It might have knocked the wind out of him, Eric, because it looked like the football might have got up underneath him, and he might have come down on top of that football. Yeah, that's what it appears the Southridge trainer is looking at is he grabbed his side. Yeah, it looked like that's the side that that football might have come down. Got up underneath that rib cage there, and he come down right on top of it. He's up slowly, but by himself, moving to the far sideline. Short walk over there to join his team. Fourth down and 12 from the 32. Left hash mark set. And it's going to be Hunter Spiva to kick it away from his 20. Contreras is at the 30. Now he's back moving forward to the 35. Spiva's kick is away. A wobbler. Contreras will take it at the 40 and is tripped there immediately. Good downfield coverage. Credit Brandon Zane for getting down there to make the stop. No return. Hermiston has it on their 38-yard line. 10-19 left in the third quarter. 21-14, and Hermiston's offense will get their first try of the second half. <laughs> Right hash mark set. Ethan Snow, the receiver to the right. Ramon Contreras to the wide side of the field left. Chase Knutes with Costa Rodriguez behind him. Takes a snap, turns, hands to Costa, straight up the middle. Bounces out to his right outside the numbers at the 45. Cuts across midfield. Down the far sideline. He goes inside the 35 to the 30-yard line. First down. He indicates himself as he runs it all the way 32 yards. Right at the 33-yard mark, Eric. And so the Bulldogs with a bit of breeze into their face now as they move towards the west end zone. Sam Colbray will check into the game for Costa. Green shifts out to the left. Play action. Caduce rolls, throws it to the flat. Caught there by Ramon. He breaks the tackle. He's at the 20. And a leg tackle stops him just short of the 10-yard line. Tanner Pope makes the tackle, but not before a 19-yard gain and another first down. Hold on. 
First down and 10 from the 11. Colbray still the deep man. Caduce is going to go under center. Two tight ends in the formation. Snow right. Contreras left. Quick throw. Fade into the right corner for Snow. It is knocked away. Good defense out there by Gonzalez. Just got his right hand up to poke it out of Ethan's. And the fade didn't have quite as much on it. That's the wide side of the field to the right. And Chase could have thrown that one higher and further and let Snow run under it. Second and ten. Back in the pistol set. Green shifts to the left at the H-back. Turn hand, Colbray running left, hit the backfield. He will fight off that one and get a yard up to the 10-yard line. Where Corey Rommeling is able to make the uh, stop. But it was Trey Atut, the senior tackle, who was in the backfield. And at least slowed Colbray down. Third down and nine from the 10. Green stands to the left of Knutes, two wide right side. Mortar in the slot. Hand off, Colbray again, big hole there. He puts his shoulder down around the five is where he's stuffed. Four-yard run. Big hole there, and Sam was able to hit it. And then he hit the uh, end, Cody Studefont. The sophomore made the tackle. And the Bulldogs are going to try another field goal. This one will go from 22 yards. Left hash mark set. Out of the hold of Kyler McCammy, Luis Medina missed from 37 earlier. Snap is low, the hold is there, the kick is up, it is through. Angled well, and Hermiston's got a 10-point lead at 24-14. to 14. With 8 minutes and 28 seconds left in the third quarter, they got it down into the red zone, and then the drive stalls, but still points come out of it, and Hermiston has their first two-score lead of the game. Yeah, nice job. That was a very good job by Hermiston, actually, of ensuring that they went ahead and at least got points out of this drive. You, know, you can hear the crowd saying, go for it, go for it, but when you're at fourth and five, you know, fourth and goal from the five, it's awful hard. Those last five yards are pretty, pretty tough to get, you know, especially on any type of run. And, you know, if you're going to do that, yeah, you throw it to that wide side. Uh, but like you said on the pass before, that was one that Chase could have gone ahead and got a little bit more air underneath and let him run underneath. I think you just, you're hitting some of the kids down there. It's some of the kids down there, they wanted to go for it. That's, yeah. that's what you're hearing. I, I don't know what the adults wanted. There were kids who were like, go for it. Yeah. And it was time to take some points and get the 24 to 14 lead. 8.28 left in the third period. Medina has it teed middle of the field at the 40-yard line. The right-footed kicker will blast one away and hammer Whoa. this one well. Eli Thomas takes it right at the 1. Coming up the middle, now edging out to his right. He's at the 10. 15 outside the numbers. Breaks the tackle to 20. 25 hobbling forward to the 29-yard line where Medina himself came in and put on the finishing tackle. 28-yard line. Is there a flag out? Didn't appear to be. If there is, it's hanging just, yeah, there is. It's oh, there right is on it. the sideline at the 28-yard line. And we wait for the indication of the penalty. Yeah, it was our own guy that, uh, you can hear Coach Hodges over here saying there's a penalty flag on the field for a late hit, but it was. It was our own guy that it would... <laughs> Well, they're going to call a legal contact with the head. That's the penalty, and it's a 15-yard run, so it moves it up to the 43-yard line. First down and 10 for Southridge. Jair Lee Thomas under center with uh, Eli Thomas, the deep man. This is Masiel Eli Thomas, turns up field. He breaks the tackle at the 50. Down the far sideline, 40. The 30, just inside the... Uh, Sideline, he's tripped up at the 15, roll him down to the 14-yard line. And Masiel Ile Thomas got out to the edge and exploded down the far sideline. 43 yards on the run, Eric. The big play sets up Southridge first and 10, just inside the 15. Two to the right, eye formation. Diaz dots the eye. 
Jair Lee Thomas takes the snap, pitch to the left. Diaz at the uh, sideline is stopped, gets a couple. They'll say he stepped out at the 13-yard line, a two-yard gain. Under eight minutes left in the third period. The Bulldogs' advantage is 24 to 14. Second down and eight to go. Left hash mark set, two wide to the right side, the wide side of the field. Eli Thomas, the junior quarterback. Long count, takes a snap, hesitates, hands off, Diaz on the delay play, coming to the right side, gets a hole inside the five yard line. Gonna be about eight yards and enough for a first down. First time we've seen kind of that trap delay. And uh, is it enough? They want to bring the chains over and take a look to see if it was enough for the first down or if it's a third of an inches. With 7.50 on the clock in the third period and the Bulldogs leading 24 to 14, but Southridge poised to answer immediately. And they have enough by about a half football to get first and goal just inside the five. Southridge is ready to go. Got to get the chains off the field on the far sideline. Ball in the middle of the park on first and goal. High formation. Diaz straight up the gut. He is hit and dumped. And a flag is out on the play. And Hermiston says they got the ball out and took it away. Jesse Rodelo. We got to check on the marker. Personal foul, face masking. Personal foul, face masking. Half the distance to the goal. Half the distance to the goal. It's only a two yard penalty, but it's first down and goal from about the one and a half. It's Eli Thomas dot in the eye. Pitch to Eli Thomas to the right. He puts his shoulder down. He spins up and he reached up over his head and got the ball across the goal line for the touchdown. Masil Eli Thomas has his second rushing touchdown of the ball game. And it comes less than a minute after Hermiston's field goal for Medina. So this is a chance for Southridge to make it a three-point ball game. Newbury, the lefty, sidesteps twice to his right. Out of the hole, the net. High snap, net gets it down, and Newbury hammers it through. 24-21. With 7.39 left in the third quarter, Bulldogs get the ball back up by a field goal. We'll take a 60-second break on 13.60 KOHU. It's the largest preseason snow tire sale ever at your Hermiston Les Schwab Tire Center. During the month of October only, you'll find the biggest savings of the year, with some savings as big as 60%. All stunning snow tires in stock are on sale at your Hermiston Les Schwab Tire Center now through the end of October. No matter what type of vehicle you drive, now's the time to save on winter tires. It's the preseason snow tire sale, happening now through the end of the month at your Hermiston Les Schwab Tire Center. Hey, Jeff, I told you that weather's going to change. You did, but it's not freezing cold like you were carrying on about in the Hermiston Glass ad. Fine, but mark my words, it will be, and people can prepare by calling Hermiston Glass. They can fix leaky, drafty windows or replace them with energy-efficient windows that'll save them money all year long in energy costs. Winter will be here before you know it. Call Hermiston Glass today. CCB 147-211. KOHU, Hermiston. Newbury's kickoff is over to the right, and coming to the left side is Mortar. He gets around one tackler. He's at the 15-20. Spins away from another tackle. Flag out on the play. The ball is loose. There's a pile around the 23-yard line. As Mortar got spun around, Hermiston recovered it. 
Costa Rodriguez got in there and was able to take it away. The uh, penalty is against Hermiston for an illegal block. So Bulldogs will have the long field to drive against. 24-21 is their advantage with seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Lifetime Vision Source scoreboard, some of the 6A scores of note. It is Sheldon, 21, Roseburg, 7. Sheldon, number 6, Roseburg, number 10 in 6A football. North Medford, 21, South Eugene, Zip. North Medford coming in, the number 8 ranked team in the Oregon Live Poll. The penalty moves it back to the 10. First down and 10 for Hermiston. Fake the high snap. It's going to be Costa. Bounces to his left and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Bulldogs have three big penalties in the second half. A 15-yard personal foul, a 2-yard, although it was a personal foul, and a 10-yard penalty. Second down and 10. Out to the right flat. Snow has the line drive pass across the 20. He's going to get the first down as he's hammered out there by Masilile Thomas. But he gets 11 yards and moves the chains. First down and 10. 14th first down of the game for Hermiston. 7-0-1 left in the third period, and the Bulldogs' lead is 24-21. Two receivers left for Caduce. Turns, takes a handoff to Contreras on the near sideline at the 25-30. Gets around the edge at the 40. Tripped up just his shoe. Grabbed by Pope to stop Contreras from going to the house. 42-yard line is where he gets to. 17-yard reception that time, Eric. Just a quick pass out to the left flat. Contreras alone left, two wide right side now. Left hash mark set, Knutes turns, play action, rolling to his right. Time to throw to the sideline, too far. Hasn't been able to connect on that pass tonight. Landon Gamble was the intended receiver. Check that, Noah Engelbrecht was the intended receiver. Noah has not seen a ton of time this season. He was recovering through the early part of the year from a broken collarbone. But back, and Hermiston needed it in a bad way tonight. No Landon Gamble, no Cole Smith, both injured. Excuse me, not Gamble, Michael Gosler out. Cole Smith out with injuries. Corey Adams out with an injury. Hand off to Anto in the backfield. He pushes forward down the left hash mark to the 45, three-yard gain. Diaz, who plays both ways, is a linebacker for Southridge. He was in there on the stop with Tut. 6.25 left in the third period. Bulldogs up by three, third and seven. Caduce with Anto standing to his left. Trips right. Looking to throw left out into the flat, and it's Anto out of the backfield. He has it, and he's stopped at the 47-yard line. Ends up just a two-yard gain for Trenton. As Clay Gonzalez got out there to make the stop. And Hermison's going to have to punt. Fourth down and five from their 47-yard line. They'll try to flip the field again. Brandon Zane is the deep man. He stands at his 25-yard line. To Contreras. Ramon's going to run. He might be in trouble. Run into the right side. Tries to get the end. And he's got it. And he's across the field. And there's a flag out on the play from back behind it. Gamble and Flores were out there trying to block for Ramon. And it's going to go against Hermiston. They call the holding. Couldn't tell, Eric. It looked like he called a hold, but it, it would be more like a block in the back, if anything. Well, it was out on that edge, and so holding's the call. It only marches it back to the 41. So it's really, it's a six-yard penalty. But now fourth down and 11. And on the right hash mark, Ramon again 
And now the officials come together to say, where was the holding? Because I don't think they have it in the right spot, to be no. honest. I think it should be further back. In fact, it should be about five yards further back. Maybe four yards further back. Well, and we'll see. Three, All right, three yards. <laughs> we'll split difference. the difference. <laughs> Call it a nine-yard penalty. Fourth down and long. Fourth down and 13 from the 38-yard line. Ramon will kick this one. And he gets oh, into nice it. Idea. Really drives it. And Zane goes back, gets away from it. It's going to take Hermes to roll inside the 20. And still roll in on its side inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Going to go for a 48-yard kick. No return. And Southridge has it first down and 10 at their 14-yard line. 5.24 left in the third period, trailing Hermiston 24-21. Pistol set for Jair Ely the Thomas. Diaz behind him to throw. Pumps. Uh -huh. Throw and go. And behind everybody, Kelly's got it down the far sideline across midfield. He's at the 30, the 20, the 15. He'll pull away from Snow into the end zone. Brendan Kelly on the pump and go route that hammered Hermiston three times last week. And the only difference between Trevor Watson last week and Jair Ely Thomas this week is he threw it in a way that Brendan Kelly could catch and run, and so it ends up being a touchdown, and a touchdown to the tune of 86 yards. Newbury to attempt the extra point. Good snap, the hold's there. Newbury pounds it straight through the middle of the uprights. 28-24. And Southridge has scored a pair of touchdowns in a row against Hermiston. And for the second time tonight, it's a huge pass play for Jair Ile Thomas. A 70-yarder to Clay Gonzalez in the first quarter. 86 yards that time to Brendan Kelly, and the leading receiver for the Suns was locked down in the first half. But that time they were able to get him free. Just a little pump fake by Ely Thomas, the stop and go route for Kelly, and he made it work. Five twelve left in the third quarter, 28-24. to 24. Chase Knutes has a couple of touchdown passes to Ramon Contreras tonight. Costa Rodriguez has a six-yard touchdown run. And Luis Medina's got a 22-yard field goal to get Hermist into their 24 points. Newbury ready to kick it away. And from the middle of the field, will angle it out to the far sideline. Contreras at the three. Right ash, Mark fakes a handoff, he's at the 15, edges to the middle of the field, 20, and is tackled from behind. Caught and dropped by the uh, safety for Southridge, Tanner Pope. But Ramon gets a 19-yard return, call it a 20-yard return, they're going to spot at the 23. First down and 10 for Hermiston, down by 4, 28-24, with 5.05 left in the third period. to the right two receivers left for Knutes with Costa Rodriguez standing to his right in the backfield to throw right side for Snow he's got it the 30 far sideline first down and more across the 35 and it looks like the tackler is shaken up on the play it was the linebacker Ripken Dunn, a senior, stands at 6'1", weighing in at 200 pounds. And he made the hit on Snow, but he's the one who's still down. And now the Southridge players will start to drop to a knee. 
And Eric, it looked like uh, it might have been, been his own player that came back to try the the strong safety on the long far side over there that came back to make uh, to help make the play on that that uh, might have got him from the side. I couldn't really tell if he if he got him there or if he went down and just uh, got on the shoulder. That's we can hope that it uh, that he's just on his shoulder there. Eric he's Duna. laying face down at about the 35-yard line, right on the far sideline. Yeah. Do you have an update, Eric, on the Hepner-Stanfield game for those out there? Hepner is pretty much for real, 26-7. to In the, looks like uh, just starting the fourth period. That update on the Lifetime Vision Source scoreboard. Hepner has now given up their second touchdown of the season, but they're... Stingy defense in their sixth game. They've get up just 13 points with the seven from Stanfield tonight. Dan Emery has now made his way over to the far sideline where they continue to check on Ripken Dunn. They have got him rolled over. And now Dunn is laying on his back. However, Helmet still on and a number of concerned folks looking on. We have four minutes and 59 seconds left in the third period. It is Southridge 28, Hermiston 24. The Bulldogs just get a first down. And it does appear that we're going to have a pronounced stoppage here. EMTs are coming out onto the field. And so we're going to clear the teams to the sidelines. We're going to be paused here for a bit with this injury timeout. Why don't we take a break right now, and we'll come back and catch you up on what's going on. 60 seconds, and we're back on 1360 KOHU. At First Community Credit Union, we believe customer service has everything to do with community service. We don't just manage money, we manage livelihoods. We see every person in every neighborhood as a sound investment with a return far more valuable than any percentage rate. At First Community, we put community first, always. Visit us in Hermiston, Pendleton, and Milton Free Water or online at myfirstccu.org for financial solutions you can trust. First Community Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. Why get insurance through your local Allied agent? Because your Allied agent is there to help. They take the time to get to know you and help you select coverage that's just right for you. With insurance for auto, home, life, and business, your Allied agent is always looking out for you. ISU, the Stratton Agency, your one responsible source, Highway 395 Hermiston in Pendleton and online at stratton-insurance.com. Products underwritten by Allied Property and Casualty Insurance Company in the police of Boyne, Iowa. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review and approval. Products and discounts not available to all persons in all states. K-O-H-U, Hermiston. Four minutes, 59 seconds on a paused clock down at the east end zone here. Kennison Field at Bulldog Stadium. Eric Olson along with Sonny Levy. And uh, Ripken Dunn, a senior linebacker for the Southridge Suns, injured, making a tackle on Ethan Snow after a 14-yard pass play out to the far sideline. Just on the edge of the field turf field here at Kennison, Dunn has been rolled onto his back but is now being placed on a backboard. The uh, crew here from Hermiston Fire and Emergency Services attending along with the trainers for the Southridge staff and Dan Emery for Hermiston had made his way over there as well. And now one of the EMTs sprinting over to the far northeast corner of the facility here. And the fourth technician, they're going to get out the stretcher. So Dunn is going to be removed from this game, and he'll be taken to Good Shepherd for treatment. It's about a stoppage to what had become a very up-tempo third quarter as uh, Hermiston went into the locker room leading 21 to uh, 14 and uh, they forced a turn they forced a punt to uh, start the uh, Southridge second half Southridge got the ball first punted it away 
and Ermiston drove down very quickly, but the drive stalled and Luis Medina pounded in a 22-yard field goal to give Hermiston their first two-score lead of the game at 24-14. to But uh, since, it's been a bit of one-way traffic. Southridge first, Masilele Thomas, a two-yard touchdown run to cap a drive and uh, cut Hermiston's lead down to three at 24-21. And then... Uh, Brendan Kelly just caught an 86-yard pass from Eli Thomas. Catch and run for Kelly. And that gave Southridge the lead at 28-24. Uh, to uh, 24. And for the Suns, it's their first lead of the entire night. So right now, the attention is being given to Ripken Dunn, the uh, senior who was injured on the last play of this game. Hermiston has it. A first down when we come back out of this stoppage. But at this point, all the attention has gone away from the action on the field and to prayers for Ripken Dunn that uh, everything's going to be okay here as EMTs uh, take care of him. We're going to turn our attention away. I mean, there's not, there's not a ton more I can describe to you as the EMTs attend to Dunn over the far sideline. It does appear that his family has made their way from the stands over there as well. And you've got the administrators from Southridge and the coaches all around Ripken showing concern. While they do that, we'll take a look. Your lifetime vision source, the scoreboard. We'll start with the games yesterday. 5A top 10, number two West Albany. A 14-7 win hosting Dallas. Number four, Silverton, 53-0. They win at Woodburn. Number six, Crescent Valley, a 55-21 win hosting South Albany. And number 10, Roosevelt, a 57-6 win. Take it on Franklin. Sherwood is cruising. They're up 49 to nothing with 21 points in the third quarter. In their rivalry matchup with Wilsonville, it is all Sherwood. Number nine, Wilsonville is going to lose to the top team in the state. And they've got the running clock on at this point. Number three, Ashland did the same. In fact, at the half, they were up 50 to nothing. It was 36 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. They were at Sutherland tonight. Springfield North Eugene, and no update uh, posted on that one. That's number five Springfield after their win last week over Hermiston. Number seven Mountain View is in cruise control, hosting Summit. They've scored 28 unanswered points to go up 28 to seven. Third quarter action now in Central Oregon. And then the last one in the top ten is the one right here, number eight Hermiston, trailing Southridge out of the Tri Cities, 28 to 24. On the 6A side of things, number one Central Catholic wins again, wins again big as they are not tested often in the Mount Hood Conference and David Douglas wasn't going to do it last night, 63 to 7 the final. Number five, Clackamas loses. I never gave up on them. Lake Oswego 42 to 18 beating Clackamas. Number seven, West Salem wins at North Salem, 49 to 28. And number nine, Oregon City, winners at home over West Lynn, 31 to 28. Those are the games in 6A yesterday. Number two, Tigard tonight at Hillsboro, leading 38 to seven. That was a halftime score for them. The big game is number three, Southridge, number four, Jesuit, and at the very least, they're going to flip spots because Jesuit is up 48 to 28 into the fourth quarter now for that one. Number six is Sheldon taking on number 10 Roseburg. And it's the Irish with a 21 to 14 lead, although Roseburg has in the fourth quarter cut it to a one score game. Number eight, North Medford is up on South Eugene comfortably, 27 to seven into the second half. And that rounds out the Oregon Live 6A Top 10. Last night in the CRC, Dallas 36, Jefferson 21. Our last update from Hood River was Pendleton's lead down to a touchdown at 21-7. to And an update there also. Oh, 35-14. to 14 now, yeah. So Pendleton has scored a couple of touchdowns in a row. 
as uh, we continue here and they're going to move the stretcher over next to uh, Ripken Dunn. Hermiston Athletic Director Mike Kay making his way across the field. Some of the Southridge players helmets off now as they watch on their fallen teammate being attended to. And again, anytime you have an injury like this, and, and when Dunn went down, he went down with his front side down first, and so he was just laying flat on his stomach on the sidelines when they initially brought the EMTs over and the trainers over, and they were very, very careful in rolling him over onto his back and now up onto the uh, stretcher. Dunn is put in place there as the fans start to give a nice cheer. Still coaches and administrators and of course the EMTs there with Dunn. and his parents as well, and they're gonna roll him carefully over to the track and then take him to the ambulance that is awaiting in the wings. Each team now will start to stretch out, and, and this is one of those tough situations uh, if, you're, if you're Southridge especially, Sonny, because it can go one of two ways. You, you know, you are able to kind of refocus yourself and rally behind your fallen teammate, and that gives you this newfound energy or, you know, Ripken Dunn's injury weighs on you. And so, you know, you, don't, you won't know the answer until we, until we put the whistle and put the ball back in play. Yeah, and, you know, the unfortunate thing is that exactly, you know, it, it could go either. And plus you have where it is getting to be a cool night tonight. You know, now you got the added to where you're going to, you've warmed up really well out there before. You've had uh, a 15 minute or longer, you know, break on this now. So the body temperatures have come back down again. It's going to be awful hard to to get that uh, body temperatures back up. This is where you could also, you know, take the chance on getting another injury here. Well, Hermiston has after the uh, pass play to Snow, they have a first down and ten. And the ball was spotted at the 30-70-yard line. Right hash mark set. Chase Knutes is going to have two receivers to his right. Engelbreck and Green, and two to his left. Costa Rodriguez stands to his left. Knutes takes a snap to throw, standing in the pocket. Now he bounces out back and throws to the sideline, and it's going to be a sliding catch on the far sideline, but a loss of two yards as Green caught it, but at the 35-yard line, so it'll second down and 12 coming up for Hermiston. Four minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Southridge 28, Bulldogs 24. Suns have scored two touchdowns in a row to take their first lead of the game. Costa Rodriguez running left, stops, bounces off of one tackler, but can never get away fully, and is finished off by Aitala. Tut got into the backfield with Rommeling, and it was Rommeling who uh, had Costa. It looked like Rodriguez got away from him, but he grabbed him by the shoelaces and held him up for Tut to finish him off. Third down and 19. Knutes to throw over the middle too high, and it's dropped by Bauman. Should have been a pickoff. Instead, it's an incompletion. And so Ramon Contreras can punt this one away and try to flip the field on Southridge. But the Suns right now have got things going their way. And out of that stoppage for the injury, Hermes is not able to get anything going. In fact, they lose yards, go backwards. Contreras will kick one high and drive Sane back. He'll get away from it. It'll roll inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Another good kick by Ramon. 44 yards, no return. Southridge with the ball, though. This is where 
this defense that has had trouble getting stops needs one bad. <coughs> 28 24 Southridge. Pistol set for Jair Ile Thomas. Play action. Looking right to the sideline. Dumps it off. It is going to be caught just short of the 30. About a two yard gain to Masiel Ile Thomas. Under four minutes left in this third period. Trips left. Tight end to the right. On second down and nine. And a quick rifled pass out to the flat left side and a hammered tackle by Tyler McCammy. Knocks it out of the hands of Clay Gonzalez. Third down and nine. You want to get ahead of yourselves here, but so far this is exactly what Hermiston needed. But now they got to get off the field on third down and long. From the 29 yard line. Haley Thomas takes a snap, play action, rolling left. He's got pressure, flings it to the sideline, way too high, incomplete. Masao Ele Thomas was in the vicinity, but it was well too high for him. And so a three and out, and it will force Southridge to go to Hunter Spiva. Fourth and nine. Fourth down and nine from the 29. Ramon Contreras hasn't really had a big return in this game. He's had some opportunities, but Spiva's putting quite a bit of air under the ball. 321 left in the third quarter, 28-24 Southridge. Snap is there, pressure under, and Spiva kicks it away. High spinning kick, and two Hermiston players run into each other. It's going to roll inside the 40. Tyler <laughs> McCabe ran into Ramon Contreras, and, and it's lucky you can laugh because nothing happened in the sense that neither of them got hit by the ball and it turned into a turnover, but... Obviously, that's not exactly how you draw that play up. They will hear about it tomorrow morning. I think they're going to hear about it right now. Yeah, At least McCabe is. Contreras gets to stay on the field. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's going to be wide to the left. Mortar in the slot that way. Snow wide right. First down and 10. Hermiston takes over on the 37. Canutes turns. Hands. Costa running right. Rodriguez is tripped from behind. Flag out on the play. It'll be marker on the play. As the middle linebacker, Gavin Jervis, the junior for Southridge, was able to get in there and make the stop. We've got to check on the marker. It's in that holding-like area, and Tut's the one the White Hat's talking to. And uh, holding it is. Fifth penalty in the second half against Hermiston. And they've been all big ones. Even the two-yard one was a personal foul penalty. First down and 20. Costa behind Canute's pistol set. Same formation with two wide left. Chase takes a snap, flings it to the near sideline. Ramon gets past one tackler. He's at the 30. And up to the 35-yard line. Gets eight of the 10 lost back. He had a more manageable second down and 12 coming up. That's Ramon's uh, sixth catch of the night for 158 yards, Eric. A lot of that coming on the 71-yard touchdown reception in the first quarter. Gave Hermiston a 14-7 lead over the far sideline. Tip four, and then diving back for it. Engelbrecht is able to make the catch on a pass that was almost picked by Gonzalez breaking on the short route to the sideline. But it ends up being a four-yard game, third down and nine. Costa stands to the right of Knutes to throw. Looking left, flings it, and incomplete. Ramon came into the middle of the field, and Chase was expecting him to go the other direction. So fourth down, and... Hermiston will punt. 2.07 left in the third quarter. Trailing now 28-24. to 
Southridge has scored two straight touchdowns. Although they were forced three and out their last offensive drive. Ramon on his 25. Snap to him is good. He's going to step, throw back over the near side. Like Coach Rodriguez has it. Left hash mark at the 25. 50. He's got the first down and more. Into Southridge territory. Down inside the 45 yard line to the 44. Sunny. We've seen a reverse on a kickoff. We've seen a fake <laughs> punt run. Now we've seen a fake punt throw. Up is down, left is right. A nice little 19-yard run, uh, pitch and catch that time for the first down there. And Ramon Contreras is a perfect quarterback rating. Yep. First down and 10 from the 44-yard line in Southridge territory. Here's Costa Rodriguez. Big hole, he gets inside the 40, breaks off of a tackle inside the 35, running down the left hash mark down near the 30-yard line. It's a first down run at about 13 total to the 31. Nice job, that is just absolutely power running there. Great job of making sure he just keeps it for positive. We got to change something up. I know they put my name on it, but I'm going to stand up off that chair right now. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 31. Left hash mark set. Knutes with a trips formation to his left. Quickly over to the near sideline. Rifles one. Ramon's got it. Inside the 25 to the 20. Steps out of bounds. Just short of the 20 yard line. They'll give him about 10 and move the chains again. Fans are starting to get into it. Bulldogs down by four with a minute 45 left in the third. Canutes with Costa standing to his left. It's a direct snap to Rodriguez up the middle. He's got some space, puts his shoulder down. The left hash mark, he runs to the 15-yard line. Into the hands of... Uh, Caden Diaz, who makes the stop for Southridge. That ended up being the first down play. First down and 10 from the 16. Coast again running left. Busts through a hand tackle inside the 10-yard line, where a diving stop is made by Tanner Pope. Helped out on the stoppage by Tyler Boost Dupas. That's the eight yard run that time, Eric. Second and two. Hermiston marching, trying to take the lead back before the end of the third quarter. Green edges out to the right, the H back. Coming back to his left to set a block coast up the middle. Bounces off of a tackler inside the five to the four. It's enough for four yards and another first down. Engelbrecht right. Ramon left, Coast to the deep man. Powers to the left for Hermiston. They're running it that way. Coast breaks the tackle, breaks the number, that's the third right into the end for touchdown, Hermiston. And the Bulldogs have the lead back. And you can hear right next to us, Eric. Uh, Coach Hodges really wants that tempo to keep coming and picking up. It's almost like a sigh of relief. Yeah. In some ways, they want to move. They want to start pushing the pace, though. Luis Medina's kick is up. It's good. He's perfect tonight. And the Bulldogs are in front, 31 to 28. Fireworks third quarter. Two touchdowns for Southridge. Hermiston's got that drive right there that they can hang their hat on. I think that's the best drive of the night. And by far the best drive of the night by either team. You know, that, that time there, they went ahead and, you know, you, you had a mix of everything. Like you said, you had, the, you had the fake punt for the throw for the first down, plus good power running by um, Costa. And, you know, we haven't seen Trenton Anto running the ball uh, very much the second half yet. So, you know, good power running, though, getting the ball inside and keeping it in there. And uh, you wonder if part of that is a product of the fact that Anto is being asked to do so much on the uh, defensive side right now as he's been inserted in as a lineman. There's a conversation going on. David Faitete, the defensive coordinator with one of the officials, through most of that pause, 
after the touchdown in the Medina extra point. Costa caps the drive with a four-yard run. 102 left in the third period, and Hermiston's lead is 31-28. Medina to kick it away. He gets into it. He's got the energy right now for sure. And he kicks a hard, high end over end. Take it at the 12-yard line. Diaz out to the left. He's going to have it at 25. He had the hook at the 40. Trips and then is going to slow him up. So he's mm. caught from behind. Just short of the midfield stripe by Flores. But Caden Diaz, burst of speed. And had a huge hole to run through. That, that is the first time tonight where Southridge has been able to dial up a huge return. Well, that time there, you saw the non-discipline of the outside team, man, Eric. We, we flew to the ball real, way too early. Diaz, all, had, all he had to do was make one cut. From the 48, just short of the midfield stripe pitch. Masiel Eli Thomas running to the right side. Stutter steps across the 50 and is brought down. Wilson in on the tackle along with Harmon after a... Uh, Six-yard gain to the Hermiston 46-yard line. Second and four, right hash mark set. Zane wide left. Receiver in the slot left and then Kelly to the right. Pistol set for Jair Le Thomas. No, it's an I formation. Hand to Diaz. He's hit hard. He gets one yard to the 45 in Hermiston territory. And that could very well be the final play of the third quarter. Ten seconds left in the period. Third down and short will face Southridge when they start the fourth. Trailing Hermiston 31-28 to after a third quarter full of fireworks. We've got the fourth after this on 1360 KOHU. We all depend on agriculture. Around here, agriculture is the engine that makes our economy go. When something's good for agriculture, it's good for our community. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our area farmers and producers for all they do to make our area a better place to live. Thanks. Old West Federal Credit Union. Federally insured by NCUA. When you grow, we grow. Making a living, making things grow. Are you ready for number one? Then you're ready for steel. The number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide. Steel makes over 30 models of chainsaws designed for homeowners and professionals. And your servicing steel dealer can match you with a model that's right for your needs. Don't settle for the number of other brands at the big box stores. Get the world's number one selling brand of chainsaw at your local steel dealer. Are you ready for a steel? Find the full line of steel chainsaws at Smitty's Ace Hardware, where they know and service the products they sell. KOHU, yes. Hermiston. Got a couple of finals on the Lifetime Vision Source so scoreboard. Number one 5A team in the state, defending state champion Sherwood, 61-0. They beat number nine, Wilsonville. Number three, Ashland, a 50-22 win at Sutherland. Run play for Masiel Ile Thomas to the right behind the tackle. He's going to get enough for the first down up to the Hermiston 41-yard line. Four-yard gain. That was enough to move the chains. Eric and Putnam has come way back. Now leading 41-40. After being down big in that game. First down and 10 for Southridge. Right hash mark set. Under center. Diaz behind. Takes the hand up. Jumps over a tackler. Busts through another arm tackle. Spins off another inside the 35. Fighting down inside the 30-yard line. Second and third effort. Just busting through the arms of Hermiston defenders to the 29-yard line. It's a whole um 13-yard run just inside the start of the fourth quarter. Hermiston leading 31-28, hosting the Southridge Suns. Jair Ile Thomas pistol set now with Diaz behind him. Too wide to the left, a man split to the right. Delayed hand off to Diaz running right. He is going to be brought down out on the edge and a nice defensive play finally. Somebody tackles the man in space and it's Colbray. Colbray has been moved in for the most part this week to defensive end position, although he has spent a little bit of time outside linebacker. Second down and 10 after no gain. Eli Thomas to throw to his brother out in the left flat. He's going to spin off of a tackler inside the 25 down to the 22-yard line. 
It should be about a four-yard gain, and it turns into a seven-yard gain. Over and over and over again. Eli Thomas and Diaz, they're just so tough to tackle. Third down and three. At the 22, it'd be a long field goal if Hermiston were able to get a stop up 20, up 31-28. Diaz running right into the pile and he's stuffed again. Cobre gets his hands on him and stops him. Maybe a yard up to the 21. So what is the call? Fourth year head man, Tony Rebel. Nate Newbury has this distance. It would be about a 33-yarder. And off Diaz, and Lefty breaks through, and he's right up the middle into the end zone. Busted through that first level on the counter to the left. And it's going to go for a 21-yard touchdown run. It's Caden Diaz's first foray into the end zone tonight. And he is uh, 20, 26 rush of the night for 126 yards on that, uh, for the touchdown. For Diaz, it is touchdown 10 on the season. They do attempt the extra part of the first number one. They do the remote in number six. Newbury to kick. Kick is up. Kick is good. Kick is good. And so Southridge is back out in front. 35-31. And they are quickly able to wrestle the lead right back. Less than two minutes on that drive. Diaz into the end zone for the first time, and it was that short yardage, so everybody was up. And as soon as he gets the, into the second level, it's over. Yeah, it was. You know, and he did a great job getting his head up after hitting that first initial tackler. Again, you know, we had some, we had a body on him early, and then he broke through it and uh, was able to go the 21 yards. Eric, we do have a final let down in Hepner. Hepner, uh, 32 to seven. So the Mustangs are 6-0, and and they've given up 13 points all season. And Stanfield came in averaging 53-plus points per game, 53.8 to be exact. And uh, Hepner wasn't having any of that. Big win for the Mustangs. Low line drive kicks, could have take a hop, take another hop, be picked up at the eight yard line. Contreras coming to the right, he's at the 15, turns up field at the 20, he's got a seam at the 25, 30, and tripped up to the 35 yard line. Hermiston will start at the 37 yard line. Making the 36, first down and 10 for Hermiston's offense. Trailing 35 to 31. Mountain View beats Summit. That's a final, 42 to 7 on the Lifetime Vision Source scoreboard. We'll have all the scores in the post game. Knutes with a back stand in his right, trips left formation on first down and 10. Looking left to the flat. Now he'll come back to the right, eyeing downfield. He has a man open. He'll throw it. It's Ooh. tipped into the air. No Engelbrecht was wide, wide open about 25 yards downfield, but Chase had zeroed in on the back Anto and tried to thread the needle into him. Second and 10 on the incompletion. Anto off, Colbre in. 9.55 left in the fourth, Bulldogs down by four. Two to the left, Green the H-back is left as well. Hand off to Colbre, coming right. He's gonna stiff arm a man across the 40. He's tripped up to the 42 yard line. Number 25, Sammy He used his left arm, put it on the top of uh, Jake Bauman's helmet and just shoved the senior away. The uh, stop was made by Dupuis. Six yard gain, third down and four. Colbert is still the deep man. Green, the H-back is to the right. Caduce takes a snap, hands to Colbert, running right, comes back to the middle, he's gonna be short of it. Stopped after a two-yard gain into the hands of Rommeling. 
Work down. And about one. And Hermison's going to punt it away. And Mark Hodges is just to our right. He wanted that play a lot faster. He wants the tempo in right now. And they didn't get it there. So Ramon's going to punt it away. Well, we'll see. They faked it already twice. He does kick this one. Nobody back for Southridge. It'll take a Hermiston bounce inside the 20 and roll to the 15-yard line. 40-yard punt for Ramon. And Southridge will take over. First down and 10 of the 15. Leading 35-31 with 8.41 left in the fourth quarter. Well, if you ever needed to stop, you need it now. Masili Le Thomas is the deep man, and he'll take the handoff running right. Spins off of a tackler, pushes forward around the 19-yard line is where the pile stops him. Four-yard gain. Brendan Kelly, the receiver to the left. Clay Gonzalez to the right. Pitch to the left side. Eli Thomas takes it, trying to get out to the edge. It's strung out. Coach to Rodriguez. Just at the 15 for a loss of four. You got to give a lot of credit on that play to... It looks like Damian Martinez was the one who got out there and strung it out. And he's a little bit shaken up as he comes off onto the sideline. But it's a four-yard loss because Costa Rodriguez makes the open field tackle. Third down and ten. Costa out to the far side, matched up with Kelly. Too wide that way. Pistol set. Eli Thomas draws back, looking to fire it downfield. Incomplete. Coast to Doe for the ball, and Kelly had no idea where it was. In fact, it went through his legs, literally. Coast tried to drive through his feet. It was kind of like he was trying to cut Kelly, but he was really going for the ball. Yeah. Well, that's what they needed. They needed to go ahead and stop, you know, Southridge that time, get the, get the football back so they can go ahead and try and uh, mount this drive coming up. Austin Monahan is back to receive. Fourth down and 10 from the 15. It puts uh, Spiva just outside of his end zone. He kicks it away near sideline. It'll check up at the 40 and roll a couple more yards. Hermiston will have it with good field position at the Southridge 44-yard line. Down 35-31 with 7.22 left in the period. We had that fantastic finish a couple of weeks ago. Went to overtime with Lewiston. Just a back and forth ball game in the second half. Lewiston jumped out to the big lead and Hermiston was able to claw their way back in and then back and forth we went. The tempo late was what did it for Hermiston. We'll see if they go faster here. First down and 10. Caduce with Anto behind him. Turns and hands. Trenton straight up the middle. He will push forward to the 40-yard line running down the right hash mark. There's a flag out on the far sideline. So, it was about a four-yard gain, but we have to check on the marker. And it was false start against Hermiston, so erase that, move it back. Bulldogs have been penalized six times in the second half. And nine times total in this ballgame. But it hasn't been the pre-snaps quite as much this week as it was last week. So instead of a four-yard gain, it's a five-yard loss. First down and 15 from the 49-yard line. Right hash mark set. Contreras and Mortar to the left, Green and Snow to the right. Check that Engelbrecht to the right. Screenplay set up the middle and Antos hit immediately. Got back to the line of scrimmage, but it was sniffed out perfectly by Tut. Maybe a half yard gain, second down and essentially 15 still. Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. 
Caduce takes a snap, turns hands, Anto again. Running to his right, he's going to get hit. Didn't quite get back to the 45-yard line, about a three-yard gain. Third down and 11 to go. Border and Contreras left. Engelbrecht to the right. Green, the H-back, is out left this time. Third and 11. Caduce the throw. He's got time to get rid of it. Lots of time. Way downfield. Jump ball for Moore. Underthrown and picked off. Right at the five-yard line. The interception is taken by Gonzalez. His second pick of the night. The third one thrown by Chase. He had forever and just didn't have enough of mustard on the ball. And unfortunately, he threw to the wrong guy. We had... Uh, or Contreras open right down the seam. Had he gone ahead and uh, thrown it early? Right down the seam, the, they were playing so far deep. There's no way that they could have come back and picked up that pass. 6.16 left in the quarter, and then breaking away is Eli Thomas. Gets the first down and more down the right. Ash mark to the 25-yard line. Across the 20, to about the 25. It was that Diaz on that run. It was Diaz on that run. Fifteen yard gain. No, twenty yard gain. First down and ten. Under center, handed again. Diaz to the right. Southard's going to try to salt this one away. Hermiston's defense has got to come up big. Under six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Southridge 35, Hermiston 31. McCabe is going to come out and replace Flores at the near side cornerback. And the Suns slowly break their huddle. Zaire Ile Thomas will go under center with an eye formation behind him. Masiel Ile Thomas dots the eye. Bounces to his right after he takes the handoff. Breaks through a tackle. Still on his feet. Bouncing to the near side. 35. Now he's at the 40 outside. The number's 45. Stops and is uh, shoved out of bounds. 47 yard line. Another big run for him. Outside the 45 to about the 47 yard line. 20 yard run that time by Thomas. So a couple of 20-yard runs, one for Eli Thomas, one for Diaz on this drive, and they've got it out near midfield after the interception. 35-31 Southridge with 5-16 left in the fourth. Two split wide right. Brendan Kelly alone to the left. Short side of the field with the left hash mark set. First down and 10. Turn in hand. Eli Thomas up the middle. This time he's going to be stuffed and dropped. Maybe a yard gain. Rodelo and Harmon made sure of it after Alexander and Martinez were able to kind of make trouble up the middle down at the feet of Eli Thomas. But it was still a matter of somebody finishing him off, and that's what Rod Rodela was able to do. Alexander out. Dylan Caldwell in with Trey Wilson at the tackles. Anto and Martinez, the end. Second and essentially 10. The I formation again. Long snap, pitch. Eli Thomas running to the right, trying to stretch the field out to the far sideline. Now he turns upfield across the 50, breaks through. He's at the 40, shoves little steps away from another tackler inside the 30, 25. He's finally shoved out of bounds. He just keeps going, and he just keeps breaking high arm tackles. Inside the 30, down to about the 25. I mean, it's a broken record type of thing, but these running backs, Diaz and Eli Thomas, they can't be tackled up high. That was a 28-yard run that time. First down and 10, down to the 25-yard line. Four minutes, 23 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Southridge 35, Hermiston 31. Jair Le Thomas, the quarterback, under center. Long count, takes a snap, turns hands. He has up the middle, he gets a couple. They get such good push. Essentially, it's a five-yard gain on a little dive. Make it a four-yard gain to the 21. Number 
about four, second six. And this power offense for Southridge. Second and six. Again, Diaz dots the eye. Diaz takes a handoff, running right up the middle. He breaks through into the second level across the 10-yard line down the right hash mark. He is stopped after another gain of about 13 down to the Hermiston nine-yard line. First down and goal for the Suns. 3.38 left in the fourth quarter. 35-31. Both teams have all their timeouts. What Hermiston really has to do is keep Southridge out of the end zone. If they can hold him to a field goal, that gives him a chance. Diaz running right. He's hit and stopped maybe two to the seven. Tackle for little game. Hash mark set. They're going to say a one-yard gain for Diaz on that carry. The nose of the ball is just at the eight-yard line. The fullback is Cody Studefont. Eli Thomas dots the eye. His brother pitches, running to the left. Now turns upfield. Comes back to the right side. He is into the grasp of Antu, who's going to stop him and drop him. It'll be a loss, and it looks like of two. Outside the 10-yard line now. And a timeout is going to be called by Hermiston with 2.39 left in the fourth. Southridge 35, Hermiston 31. We'll take the break on 1360 KOHU. Chevrolet's new tagline is Find New Roads. Well, Cheryl Chevrolet is doing just that. We are moving, making it easier yet to take a look at what a great product Chevrolet is putting on the road. There are many to choose from, including the new design 2014 Silverado. This fall, Cheryl Chevrolet will be opening our new facility on 395 North in Hermiston. Thanks to our loyal customers, we are able to continue to serve the community and offer a better and easier way to purchase a vehicle. Our new location will be larger and comes with the same friendly and honest service we've had for the last 68 years. Cheryl Chevrolet, 16 years and growing. There's money hiding in your attic. At least there was in mine. And my Touchstone Energy Cooperative showed me how to properly insulate in order to keep that money from escaping in the form of heating and cooling costs. By blowing in a fresh layer of insulation, I'm saving 240 bucks a year. What can you do? Find out how the little changes add up at TogetherWeSave.com. The Humatella Electric Cooperative, your Touchstone member cooperative, making life better for their members. KOHU, Hermiston. Suns come right to the line on third down and goal from the 11. I formation behind Jair Le Thomas. The Southridge quarterback turns and hands. It's going to be a straight up the middle run. And right down the right hash mark, Hermiston is going to be able to keep Caden Diaz out of the end zone. No, not Diaz. Eli Thomas on that run to the six yard line. Bulldogs will call another timeout on fourth down and goal from the six. 2.32 left for the left-footed kicker for the Suns, Nate Newbury. He'd have to push this one from the right hash mark for him. It's kind of back across the field into a bit of breeze. It's not a ton, though. And it's almost a crosswind right now from the left goalpost to the right. Essentially a south wind. South Bridge 35, Hermiston 31, 232 left in the fourth. And the Suns have already broke their huddle. And they're going to set up to kick it. No, are they? Yes, yep. they are. They're going to kick it and try to make this a seven-point game. The long snapper is Matthew Garrity. The holder is a net. The kick is up and through for Newbury. To make it 38-31 with 2.29 left in the fourth quarter. The offense is 
Got to find a way to give Chase a little bit of protection. And then Chase has got to find a way to get back that accuracy that he had at the start of this game that somehow at least disappeared with some regularity about the middle of the second quarter. Yeah, it all came, uh, and it wasn't as if he was really being rushed either out there. I mean, you know, he's just got to settle himself down and throw the football like he knows he can and uh, let this thing, you know, give his teammates a, an opportunity to help him out. Newbury's 22-yard field goal. Right for Hermes of Volleyball. Caps that long drive for Southridge. That was really defined by a trio of 20 plus yard run plays. Carson Mortar to the left, Costa Rodriguez to the right to return the kick of Newbury. Newbury is going to kick it kind of short. Chips it. Costa takes it at the 15-yard line. Coming to the right side. He's at the 20. Hash mark 25. Finds a seam at the 30. Breaks through more tackles oh, and reaches man. forward to the 40. Nice little uh, trip back there. Let me see his number. Number two actually come down across his ankles there and uh, knocked his uh, left foot into his right foot and uh, to save a probably a really long game. Tanner Pope on another tackle. He's been really good tonight for Southridge. 222 left in the fourth. Bulldogs down by seven. 38-31. Two wide left side for Chase Canutes. Lag out on the play. Canutes throws it away. That was really weird. Chase and Costa were on different snap counts. And so Costa started motioning and it's an illegal shift on Hermiston. And so the Bulldogs will instead have first down and 15 from the 35 yard line. Mortar in the slot left, Contreras wide left. Bulldogs moving left to right across the field. Flag out, far sideline. False start, five more. Oh my. Eleven penalties. Five of them have been pre-snap tonight. Let's try it again. First down and 20 from the 30. Two wide left side. Green the H back left. Costa stands to the right of Knutes. Looking to throw right. Rifles one over the middle. Engelbrecht's got it at the 40. At the 45. Tipped up as he gets near midfield. This spot will put him right about the 20-yard gain. It's not quite enough for a first down. Needed to get across the 50. So it's second down in inches. Tane Kendrick signals in, signals in the play. Two to the right. Two to the left. But Mortar was out of position. Now he's set. Second down in inches. The throw dumped off in the middle. Rodriguez has it into Southridge territory. Bounces away from a tackler inside the 35 down the left hash mark. Just started the 30 yard line. It's a 19 yard gain. A minute 42 left in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs down by seven, but moving quickly. All their timeouts, although they have one left, Southridge has all their timeouts. First down and 10. Turn and hand off. Rodriguez right up the middle. Huge hole. He's inside the 25-yard line where he's hit by Diaz and Pope. Gain is going to be good for seven, eight-yard line. Eight yards, second and two. Knutes with the back standing to his left. Looking to throw this time. Over to Contreras. Has it on the far sideline. First down and more. Knocked out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Gain of nine. First down and 10 for Hermiston down to the 13-yard line. Engelbrecht and Mortar to the right. The H-back green is to the right. Ramona Lone to the left. Costa behind Knutes. 
snap, play action, rolling right under pressure, flings it to the sideline, it is incomplete as Engelbrecht dives to knock it out of the hands of Brandon Zane, who almost had the pick that would have ended the game. Wow, that was close, Eric. That's, you know, that's the one that he's got, that, that uh, Case has just got to learn. If it's not there, you airmail it, and you airmail it out uh, wide outside, out uh, off the sidelines. 112 left. The clock isn't necessarily as important right now. Hermiston just has to score on the drive. They're huddled, second down and 10. Left hash mark set from the 14-yard line. Ramon and Carson to the left. Engelbrecht alone to the right. Knutz takes a snap. There's a flag out. It's going to be a false start on Hermiston. I think it was on the right side of the line. Actually, I think the defensive line might have jumped up. No, you're right. 12th penalty. Six pre-snap penalty. Back to the eight. 19-yard line. Second down and 15. Bulldogs have to have a touchdown. Rodriguez behind Knutes. Chase takes a snap, turns, play action. Time, dumps it off, it's a screen play. Rodriguez reaches forward, gets back to the line of scrimmage, but he is going to be stopped by Atawa. And it's third down and 15. The screen plays have been covered well by Southridge tonight. 60 seconds left and a timeout called. Essentially two plays. So you don't have to get all 15 yards right now. You don't have to get all 19 yards into the end zone right now. You can take two shots at it to get the first down, and you can score first down without a touchdown. Preaching patience down by seven with a minute left is kind of a tough sermon to have, but, I mean, that's, what, that's the way I'm looking at it right now, is you don't have to do it here. You've got two plays. But you've got to be able to go ahead and go north-south instead of east and west where that little screenplay was going that last time, you know. And you, you, you can't, you've got to be able to, number one, uh, they've sniffed out that uh, little screen uh, pass over on the short side of the field uh, every time that we've thrown it over there. Third down and 15. Tail of the ball on the 19-yard line left hash mark. No Engelbrick at the right hash mark. Carson Mortar in the slot right. Green the H back right. Rodriguez stands to the right of Knutz. Takes a snap. Looking to throw. Time over the middle. It is going to be caught in traffic by Green. He has it down to the six yard line. Again, they didn't have to get all of it right there. Hermiston's going to go tempo. But they have to get yardage here. Fourth down and three from the six. Got to get it across the four. Knutz takes a snap. Turns and hands. Rodriguez in the backfield. He is stuck. Comes back to his left. Still stuck. Dropped. And that's going to be the turnover on downs. And Southridge will win on that defensive play. They tried to run it right. And the Southridge Suns had the pressure they needed into the backfield to get the stop. Hermiston without any timeouts is going to fall by a touchdown, 38-31. to 31. V for victory formation. Southridge will call a timeout just to make sure they've got it aligned correctly. But if you look at it, what it comes down to is this, is the Suns are going to outscore Hermiston 24 to 10 in the second half. And a 10 nothing in the fourth quarter. Southridge is able to pitch the shutout and that drive was a very good drive, but they needed it to be a great drive with a big play to finish it. The Bulldogs will be hosting Hood River Valley homecoming next Friday night. The Eagles lost 48-28 at home to Pendleton. 
Southridge will line up, take the knee. And uh, depending on how quickly they spot the ball and whistle the play, that should do it. They don't need to actually run another one. And they're just standing over to make sure, but the final seconds will run off the clock. And it'll be 38-31. The Southridge Suns enact a bit of revenge after losing last year at home to Hermiston. They come to Hermiston's home stadium and they beat the Bulldogs in what is Hermiston's final non-conference game of the year to drop Hermiston to a four and a three. And for Southridge, they get win number four of the season. They are four and a two. So conference play is on the way for the Bulldogs. Hood River Valley next week, then the trip to the Roundup Grounds for Pendleton in two weeks. We're going to take a break. We'll gather our thoughts, we'll gather the stats, we'll gather some scores from around the state, and we'll put a conclusion on this one for you. Let's uh, take our break. We'll be back on 1360 KOHU with postgame after this. An estimated 10 million Americans show evidence of age-related macular degeneration, affecting their straight-ahead vision. This is Dr. Colin Eric with Lifetime Vision Source. Early-stage macular degeneration can be detected through a comprehensive eye exam. While there is no cure for macular degeneration, early detection and treatment can slow or minimize vision loss, and in some cases even improve vision.